Don't live in fear. Their lives are always under threat. Mtoto wangu ndio alinambia mama yake kwamba baba yako ni mchawi. Nimelala nyumbani mwangu nikiamuka ninakatwa mapanga. Kama hakutakuwa na mbinu ya kuzuia mauaji ya wazee baada ya miaka kumi ijayo kutakuwa hakuna mzee. Kuna mtu ambaye anaenda Italy. Unaenda nani? Angalia kwa kio. But unajua vizuri sana. Na mimi na tulikuwa tume plan vacation together to the Italy. Now you know how it feels to be jealous. So naweza kuona. Unataka mimi nikuje kwako? Mm, kuja. Ever since Brayo alanduku umekuwa desperate. Kila saa mara mko date mara mnafanya nini? Unataka kurudi kamiti nini? Unajua kamiti ni home. Kama umerudia wizi, itabidi basi umeachana sera. Ni kwa present. Imeandikwa PB PB na maanisha nini? TV turning on your world Good morning good morning good morning and many thanks indeed for joining us here in the market Today on AM Live, of course, you know every Thursday we have in the market coming your way, which is up next. Yes, today we're going to be training our focus still on coronavirus and how it is impacting on our economy and looking at a raft of issues as far as the supply chain is concerned. We saw already some retailers have warned Kenyans that they're going to hike prices of some of the consumer goods and this is bound to also make you wake up and prepare and just nonetheless we don't know what will really happen along the way as far as this uh, pandemic which the World Health Organization has not really called it pandemic but others are uh, saying they should call it pandemic because it is what it is right now. The numbers are still rising as far as the global figures are concerned. We shall be showing you that much, much later. And also interventions are coming from everywhere as far as the combating coronavirus is concerned. We have a wonderful panelists already in studio with us. Up and early. This is Dr. Gituro Wanaina. Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning, morning. Good to see you. Same here. Uh -huh. yeah. How have you been? I've been well. Uh -huh. Just greeting with the legs these days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, you have, uh, you know, sanitizers around, you need to wash your hands. Exactly, exactly, yes. exactly. That's, it's affected, and that will happen. Mm -hmm. I think what is important is uh, to appreciate what we have learned from it. Mm -hmm. uh, because as you listened to the kata yesterday, we have lost a lot. It's today, this is what is on the front page of the Delhi Nation. Ruto allies magic bullet against Raila. That is a splash. Uhuru will have to choose between his deputy and newfound friend Odinga. That is a splash. Force Uhuru's hand, arguing that the ODM leader is a stranger in government. Deputy President's men say they will only present their views on BBI if President Kenyatta attends Nakuru rally. This story continues on page four and five of the Daily Nation today. Men of the moment, their faces are spread here. President Uru Kenyatta has been challenged to take charge of the campaigns to popularize BBI. ODM leader Ilo Dinger's steering of the BBI rallies has unnerved Deputy President William Ruto's allies. Also, Senate, or Senate Majority Leader Kip Chumba Murkomen described BBI rallies as just ODM functions to which leaders from other parties are merely invited. And we have Caleb Kositani, Jubilee Party Deputy Secretary General, saying the president is elected leader. There is a big thing called BBI going on, and he cannot leave it to people who are strangers to those of us who voted for him. So we have all this story continuing on page five of the Daily Nation today. Also, a cyber story here, Kenya wants Somalia over border fight. President Kenyatta last evening accused Somalia of flagrant breach of Kenya's territorial integrity 
but maintain Mogadishu must sit down with the federal states to iron out their differences. The president who chaired a National Security Council meeting said he had noted that Somalia's soldiers had fought on Kenya land, or, uh, causing tension and harassing residents in Mandera. This story continues on the back page of the Daily Nation today. Also, blood crisis hampers safe motherhood is another story that you want to follow on page 12 of the Daily Nation today. And on top here, who is frustrating Kinoti's efforts to fight corruption? That is the question today. Frustrated by what he claims to be the failure of the office of DPP to charge suspects, the director of investigations go on the warpath. You can follow this story inside the Daily Nation on page 4. Also, just a primer for tomorrow in the Daily Nation, war on drugs, the jailing of the Akasha brothers did not end the trade. Far from it, a recent investigation reveals the drugs continue to flow into the country with the judiciary being pinpointed yet again for slackening in the fight. That is all tucked away in tomorrow's uh, paper, The Daily Nation. This is our looks. Make sure you grab a copy for yourself today. Let's move on. We see what we have on the front page of the standard. And this is your headlining splash. How Tuju gambled his billions. That is a splash today. Investment gone sour. The shocking fall of one of Kenya's richest politicians who mortgaged his vast empire for 913 million shillings loan that he could not pay. You can follow his story on page 6 and 7 of the Standard today. Also still on the front page of the Standard, why Raila brought ODM rebels back into the fold. ODM leader welcomes politicians who fled the party with insiders saying he will receive new allies in coming days to strengthen the outfit ahead of 2022 polls. This story continues on page 8 of the Standard today. Also, Standoff Kenya won Somalia against aggression after a border war is the story that you need to follow on the on page 5 of the standard today. And of course that is a continuing story in uh, the standard you will have it on page uh, 5. Let's move on and see what we have on the front page of other dailies as well. And uh, let's see what we have on the front page of the People Daily. And this is your splash today. It's all systems go for coronavirus. It says here, ready for action. One week after enduring backlash over its lackluster approach to the highly contagious disease that has so far claimed more than 3,200 lives worldwide, the government stepped up its preparedness levels by setting up county emergency response committees countrywide. This story continues on page four of the People Daily this morning. We have reactions also here uh, from uh, Mutai Kagwe, the CS Health. He says all counties should draw up their budget and logistics and set aside contingency funds to handle any possible outbreak. And we can see this is Priscilla Wangare of Kiambu Level 5 Hospital fitting or being fitted with personal protective equipment by Caroline Mumboy of Kenyatta University Teaching Hospital during a coronavirus handling training session by staff from the World Health Organization at a Nairobi Hotel yesterday. That is a story that you want to follow also inside the star on page uh, uh, 4 where it is well fleshed out for you. Uhuru to Somalia, do not provoke us. President Tam's accusations that Kenya was interfering in Mogadishu after baseless or uh, in, in Mogadishu affairs baseless present times accusation that Kenya was interfering in Mogadishu affairs baseless that is a story that continues on page six of the People Daily today. Wanyama off to MLS, Rambe stars captain ditches spas for Henry's Montreal impact. You can follow the story on page 32 of the People Daily today. Also, residents back. Takeover of City Hall. Elachi accuses Sonko of using political deceit to frustrate deal. That is a story that you want to follow also inside the People Daily this morning. Police stations where you are likely to die. It's they're listed here. Report on extrajudicial killings indicate jobless youth in slums are targets of rogue officers. And we have Nairobi. Uh, Dandora, Uruma, Madare, Pangani, Karubangi, Mukuru, Kwanjenga, and Kamukunji, Inyeri, Nyeri Central Police Station, Wasengishu, you have Eldoret Central Police Station, also 
In Mombasa, you have Nyali Police Station as well. This is from IPOA and also from the civil society as well. This is how the People Daily looks today. Make sure you grab a copy for yourself. Let's move on and see what we have on the front page of the Taifa Leo. I'll try and retrieve the star as well for you. BBI Yawatakasa Washukiwa, it says. Kukumbatiwa kwa viongozi walio na kesi za ufisadi. Uhalifu kutini kwa safisha sifa zao. That is the splash that we have on the front page of the People Daily this morning. Not the People Daily, but the Taifa Leo this morning. You can follow the story on page two of Taifa Leo. Also, virusi via corona. Serikali ya puuza agizo la kutenga abiria kutoka China. It says here, serikali ilikiri jana kuwa haijatimiza agizo la mahakma. Nililo itaka kwa tenga abiria. Uh, miambili thalathini na tisa waliotoka China wiki jana kat, katika kambi ya jeshi kama tahadhari ya kuzuia mambukizi ya virusi vya corona nchini. You can follow the story on page 2 of Taifa Leo this morning. Also, yabainika Papa Francis Hana coronavirus. Yabainika Papa Francis Hana coronavirus. Though bugbears and fears about it, but the Pope Francis uh, also uh, contracting this coronavirus but now you have that revelation there on page two it continues you can read all the details there on page two of the Taifa layer today let's buckle down to some business before I show you what we have on the front page of the Taifa layer 499 Kenyans fall off the list of dollar millionaires 499 Kenyans fall off the list of dollar millionaires Economic slowdown cuts numbers of those with net worth above 100 million shillings to 2,900. An estimated 499 Kenyans dropped from the rank of dollar millionaires last year, highlighting how the impact of, of Kenya's soft economy has hurt persons who each had a net worth of more than 100 million shillings. The 2020 Night Franks Wealth Report classified 2,900 Kenyans among the world's highest net worth individuals last year, representing 14.6% drop compared to 2017 count. The story continues on page 4 of the Business Daily this morning. Also, we have a graphic presentation here of the dollar millionaires in Kenya from 2014 up to projecting up to 2024, 20, uh, dollar millionaires in Kenya dropped 499 last year. Individuals worth over $30 million, that is 3 billion shillings, are also reduced by 6 to 42. And this is the graphic to give you just more details of what or how it looks like. DPP warns banks against 721 million shillings NOI's fine claims. Director of Public Prosecutions, Nurdin Haji, has warned five banks against seeking insurance compensation for the 721 million shillings fine that was imposed on the lenders for failing to report suspicious transactions linked with the theft of funds at the National Youth Service. Mr. Haji told the lenders that they risk prosecution should they demand reimbursement from insurance firms to cover the millions paid to the office of DPP and Central Bank of Kenya for facilitating the fraud. The story continues on page 4 of the Business Daily today. Kenya, in agreement with IMF over standby credits after fallout. That is another story that you want to follow. The International Monetary Fund and the Kenyan government have moved up a step closer to agreeing on how or agreeing on a new standby facility after the multilateral lender backed the government's 161 billion shillings budget cuts. That story continues on page four of the Business Daily. And there's a standalone picture here. This is coronavirus fight. Uh, Transport Secretary, this is James Masharia, when he appeared before a joint parliamentary committee on health yesterday to brief legislators on Kenya's preparedness against coronavirus. You have this story continuing also inside the Business Daily today. On the ticker this morning, business deals hit two-year low on cash crunch. Kenya's private sector activity dropped for the second month in a row in February to hit lowest levels in more than two years as consumers struggled to afford goods and farms grappled with increased cost of raw materials. The story continues on page five of the Business Daily. Today, the digit is 51 billion shillings. That is the amount of two operators or two operators and in 2019, according to industry lobby group Carter, 
The story continues on page six of the Business Daily. Bribery linked fraud overtakes tender crimes. Bribery and corruption linked fraud has overtaken procurement related fraud to become the fastest growing economic crime in Kenya in the last two years. A Price Waterhouse Cooper's survey of firms shows. And you can follow the story on page seven of the Business Daily this morning. Also, small cap stocks, best performers, it says here. Uh, small cap stocks at the Nairobi Security Exchange were for the second straight month of straight month the best performing at the bows in terms of price appreciation as investors hunt for bargain. The story continues on page 19 of the business daily this morning. This is how it looks. As I zoom out, make sure you grab a copy for yourself. We can now cross borders and see what is happening also in close country. Let's see what is happening in Tanzania. And we have the citizen here. Travel crisis grinds as rains hampers repair of key bridges. It says here, this is on the front page of a citizen. Transport between Dodoma and Morogoro held up for a third day as Majaliwa orders the removal of Tran, Tan Road's regional manager for dereliction of duty. You have the story on page four of the citizen this morning. Also safe. John Pome Magufuli should hold dialogue with the opposition. Opposition leader Saif Sharif Hamad wants President John Magufuli to hold a structured dialogue with the opposition over demands for free and fair elections and revival of the stalled constitution review process, saying this were crucial issues as Tanzania prepares to go the polls later this year. The story continues on page two and three of The Citizen. And aviation stakeholders join hands to keep coronavirus at bay. Find all the details on page four of the citizen in Tanzania. Still there, we have also Monainchi for you, and this is what you're waking up to on the front page of Monainchi in Tanzania. Ujumbe wa Maalim Saif Kwa Magufuli. I read that for you on the front page of the citizen, but this is splash as well on the front page of Monainchi. You can follow the story on page five of Monainchi this morning. Daraja Lilo Bomoka, Lamuwa Kigogo, Tanroads, Morogoro. That is another story that continues on page three of Monainchi as well. Let's see what is happening in Uganda briefly and uh, we can try and see what is on the front page of... Well, that seems to elude me, but uh, we'll head over now to Rwanda. i show you what is on the front page of the New Times. Additional 17 billion Rwandan francs Muteule funding to boost healthcare. That is a splash today on the front page of the New Times. In 2015, Jean Baptiste Ntakiru Timana, a resident of Gisaragara district, lost his wife at the University Teaching Hospital of Butare. She died from kidney failure in part because they could not afford the 60,000 Ronan francs bill for the drugs she had been prescribed for, despite having health insurance cover. Motule uh, Disente. It says. Uh, that the doctors prescribed medicine for the kidney disease that my wife was suffering from, but we we told we were told to fully pay for it by our own. Because Motola de Sante does not cover such medicine, you can read the rest of the details. Uh, just a gri gripping reality of how also access to health is very expensive in Rwanda. This story continues on page five of the New Times. Experts calls for more economic inclusiveness for women. This story continues on page five of the New Times in Rwanda. And Tanzania starts repairs on road linking Rwanda. Is another story you can also follow on page five. IMF cut global growth focus amid coronavirus spread. We'll give you all the details of this also. But you have it also on page 11 of the New Times this morning. Let's continue and see what we have on the front page of the other international dailies this morning. We can pick up the latest copy of the the Economist, American Nightmare, could it come to this? American Nightmare, could it come to this? And uh, you have a picture there of Bunny 2020 and Trump, who are gagging, of course, for the presidency later this year. So is this a nightmare? And we've seen also uh, how it goes global. Uh, also, that is inside The Economist, meet the EU's tra trade bruiser. Working 9 to 5, digital twin of the heart. That is another story you can follow instead. And let us this 
this is a reality as far as the economy is concerned. Fed cuts rates amid various fears is a story to need to follow. Stocks, bonds, yield fall after Central Bank takes biggest emergency action since 2008 crisis. The Federal Reserve executed an emergency half percentage point rate cut and markets lead reflecting fears the coronavirus epidemic is raising recession risks for the U.S. and global economies. The Fed reduced the federal funds rates to a range between 1% and 1.25% in the first rate uh, change in between scheduled Fed policy meetings since the 2008 financial crisis. You can read the rest of the details inside the Wall Street Journal. And this is a uh, bunny former vice president, no, this is Joe Biden, uh, taking the stage in Los Angeles after wins in, the, in a string of Super Tuesday, that is a Super Tuesday, I should say, not the Super League, uh, primary contest. Biden picks, picks up string of victories. Sanders logs big win in California. Former vice president John Biden notched a string of Super Tuesday victories with uh, Senator Bernie Sanders uh, winning uh, delegates reach California as the pair broke away from the field in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. You can follow the story inside the latest copy of the Wall Street Journal, of course, time zone notwithstanding. And Tennessee Twisters kill at least 25. Tennessee Twisters kill at least 25. You can follow the story inside the Wall Street Journal as well. So those are the dailies we have for you. Let me just also pick up a copy of the Star, which is a hard copy, just to show you what is on the front page of the Star as well. In the meantime, this is the Daily Nation for you. If you've not uh, seen it yet, you're waking up now. That is how it looks today. And uh, who warns Somalia of border conflicts is what is on the front page of the Star. President Chair's National Security Council accuses neighbor of provocation. Fighting erupted near Mandera on Monday. Mogadishu claims Kenya is harboring wanted man. The story continues on page six of the Star. This is a serious matter as you can look there. The, the flag reading president chairs the National Security Council accuses neighbor of provocation. Also, we can see a standalone picture here. ODM leader Raila Odinga receiving former Kasarani MP Elizabeth Ongaro, Ongoro, I should say, to Chungwa House yesterday. On Ongoro Jakao Medio and Oyugi Magwanja rejoined the party. Right, this is a new revelation there. You can follow the story also inside the star. And Nairobi County tops shameful list of teenage pregnancies. This is a worrying statistic. Uh, uh, worrying statistics there. You can follow the story on page two. Shock as keen of people killed by cops forced to pay 3,000 uh, shillings for bullets. And tough rules proposed for the handling and transport of fresh milk. That is another story you can follow on page 11 of the Star this morning. Right, let's see also what we have as laughter and levity, which is up next, just to see what the editorial cartoonists have, they have for us this morning. Let's begin with the Star. Actually, this is a standard, and this is what Gado has done for us today. Coronavirus, corrupta a virus, right? That is the involvement of corruption in this country. That is what has been captured today by Gado. Not really Gado. Yes, this is Gado inside the standard today. So I'll leave it for you to decipher that. I want to show you also what we have on the front page of, not really the front page, but, but the editorial page of the star. And this is what Alphonse has drawn for us, our public defenders. And this is the latest development as far as the DCI and the DP, DPP is concerned. They're not seeing to, uh, eye to eye as far as the prosecution uh, is concerned with DCI claiming that he's being frustrated by the nature of investigation uh, or, or prosecutions uh, investigated uh, by the DPP. That is what we have inside the star this morning. According to Ozone, I want to show you just briefly also what we have inside 
the Daily Nation today as far as Victor is concerned. And it's all about the BBI as well. I'm going to load it up quickly for you to, to see. This is what we have inside the Daily Nation today. The editorial page, BBI, this is the Baba's Ark. And they went in two by two. And there has been, of course, the story of sanitization since the BBI came to fall uh, of some of the soiled politicians. You can see them there and some of the MPs as well. That is in the Daily Nation today. Let's see what Tano has drawn for us in the People Daily. And this is what is in the People Daily today. Coronavirus. I have taken all the safety measures. It says third world countries. This is how they've taken their safety measures. A ball and chain, a ball of their HIV AIDS, cancer. And uh, of course, the coronavirus also is reigning globally. This is uh, what we have inside the people daily today. I know I showed you this yesterday. I jumped the gun, but this is what is actually inside the people daily today. According to Steno, and largely that will be part of our discussion today as far as uh, coronavirus is concerned and how it is impacting the economy. This is what we have inside the people daily. So those are your dailies. Make sure you grab the Daily Nation. You grab also the star. Not really the star, but of course the star. Well, whichever paper that really flo floats your boat for those compelling also riveting stories as well. But up next, we have the news here for you. We get from the archive stories that we did for you in 2000 or 2002. And here it goes. Two leading members of the team of experts appointed to seek ways of tackling the endemic problem of corruption in Kenya. They are Graham Stockwell, a former commander of the London Metropolitan Police and CAD, and the group's advisory director, Bill Waite. The group in London warns that its task will not be a whitewash. Its experts met Foreign Affairs Minister Marston Madoka in his office today and held a closed-door meeting. Madoka had earlier said that the appointment of the team shows the president's commitment to wiping out corruption. By appointing these uh, neutral people, um, I think it's a very good step. And uh, we, as members of the cabinet, will give uh, the team our fullest support. DP leader Mwai Kibaki has scoffed at the appointment of the team, saying that there is enough expertise in the country to tackle the vice. There must not be pretense. We are not to be fooled as Kenyans that getting three or four or ten foreigners from various parts of the world, they will be able to fight what has not been fought by different commissions in the past. Kibaki does not mince words on the way forward. We want the government to bring to parliament and to call parliament urgently. The experts have enormous experience but admits the issues to be tackled are complex. Abdi Osman, Nation TV, Nairobi. how far we've come uh, in fighting corruption, uh, looking for experts as well, but still it's a niggling worry going also by what uh, we had in the Business Daily this morning. And I told you you can grab a copy of the Business Daily where bribery uh, linked fraud overtakes tender crimes. This is a new report or a survey there by Porter, uh, that is Price, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Uh, and the story continues on page seven. It says bribery and corruption linked fraud has overtaken procurement related fraud to become the fastest growing economic crime in Kenya in the last two years. Well, we shall hear from our panelists briefly also about this. And here is their guest profiles.
of our panelists. Let's see also how the, uh, the coronavirus is uh, affecting the global economy, uh, which is um, a bunch of the stories that we've prepared for you. And we shall discuss this with our panelists. Now, IMF Chief Kristalina Dujiva has called for an all-out, no-regrets response to the new coronavirus ep epidemic, which poses a serious threat to the global economy. She is warning that the impact of a COVID-19 outbreak will, show, will slow, I should say, growth in the world economy to below the 2.9% posted last year. The virus has shattered factories, disrupted travel, infected over 93,000 people worldwide and killed more than 3,200, mainly in China. While well, some countries are struggling to test for and contain the spread of the illness, that has spurred global policymakers to come out in force to mitigate the damage, including an emergency half-point cut in interest rates by the Federal Reserve on Tuesday, followed by a similar cut by Bank of Canada on Wednesday. While some economists argue lower interest rates will do little to help address interruptions in the supply chains, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said it will provide a boost to confidence. Thank you very much. And let's listen in to some of the reactions. And while also Dujiva said the global financial system is in good shape now after being fortified in the wake of 2008 crisis, we do need to have measures that are bringing a sense of confidence and prevent credit from freezing up. The IMF in January forecast growth this year of 3.3%, which means at least half point will be lost to the virus. Dujiva said the fans' analysis had assumed the virus will largely be confined to China, which will have led to a sharp bus, short economic slowdown, followed by a quick recovery. The fund is due to release its updated focus in mid-April. Dujiva and World Bank President David Malpass spoke to reporters after a conference call of finance officials from member nations who directed the IMF to use all its available financing instruments to help member countries in need. What we are wrestling with is uncertainty. And that defines our projections, which at this point lead us to state that global growth in 2020 will dip, dip below its last year's levels. But how far it will fall and how long the impact would be is still difficult to predict. This is no longer a regional issue. It is a global problem calling for a global response. We want to really find ways to supplement and augment the availability of working capital, which is the capital companies need to import goods to build up their, rebuild their inventories. So it's the short-term financing that's critical during a crisis. And John is a doctor currently working in Wuhan. They say the novel coronavirus can easily invade the organs and is really a threat to human beings. Kao Beans and others were speaking to journalists via a video link briefing organized by China's State Council. Let's just... It seems that the, uh, the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus can easily invade the lung, easily invade the other organs, including the heart, including the liver, intestine. So this new virus is, is, really, is really a threat to human beings. Right, and those uh, doctors, or is a doctor from uh, Wuhan, I had other uh, clips as well. We'll play them by you much, much later in the course of the program. We want to buckle down to discuss this with our panelists. Uh, remember, the subject is coronavirus and uh, the global economy, or the economy, how it is also affecting us here in the country as well. We'll give you more details also on what is on the front page of East African as well. Imports also have li really slammed as far as, uh, you know, the ships that's, Doc at Mombasa Port is concerned. So we have a panelist with us, and uh, we begin with Dr. 
Geturo Wanaina, good morning. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, so we've heard also from uh, the doctor there, from Wuhan. Mm -hmm. Now it is a big threat. Your current assessment, briefly. Now let me first step back and uh, keep is asking me we should be having masks here. We should be having masks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I thought uh, you saw also the, the sanitizers are around. And also greeting with our legs, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think we can't uh, underestimate the impact of it. I think... Uh, uh, it's one virus which perhaps has affected every part of the world. Yes. Whether you look South, South America, whether you look Europe, Africa. And um, as I said earlier on, the start of this show, it's probably one of the key things is how do we solve this humanitarian challenge? I think that's really affecting everybody. Uh, there was a very interesting clip from Singapore. Uh, and I think it's time as countries look at this, how much hope do we provide? How much are we dealing with it? Uh, and Singapore, I think, is one, one country which has come very strongly in terms of addressing it. And the question here is, as one, we can deal with it as a country, as the nations of the world. So my thinking about it, yes, it has and it will indeed. Uh, particularly if you look at our small businesses, which get a lot of their products from China, that really has impacted on them. Uh, one th issue comes is also look at hotels. Uh, for example, the, the flights which have been cancelled uh, from Italy, uh, this basically the, the chartered ones. Yes. It means they are not coming to the hotels. So what does it mean in terms of the people working in hotels? So it's something perhaps, and I'm happy that institutions like IMF, uh, World Bank, uh, are coming in and how we deal with it. But I want probably to emphasize the point probably we, we need to deal with. I, I think right now it's not uh, brimming. Uh, yesterday we saw what was happening in Nairobi. It's not a question of brimming. It's a question of how to deal with it. And, and, and we, are, we are very good at brimming than saying this is probably how we can deal with it. And I think each one of us has a responsibility. Because I think it's one area you can, uh, uh, we can manage by simple uh, ways. Uh, I'm happy also to report that... Uh, the last victim of Ebola was released on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So as far as Congo is concerned, that has been uh, contained. And I think we can contain this with the efforts we have mm -hmm. right now. Worrying, actually, this uh, yesterday, the, 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 the governor of California declared, uh, declared a state of emergency mm -hmm. because of this. So there are certain things we need to take. Uh, we all know that in Rome, schools, universities have been closed for almost a month or so. So there are certain things we need to take so that it really doesn't permeate the, uh, uh, as much as possible in, the, mm -hmm. in Africa. Uh, the case in uh, Senegal, the case in Nigeria, at least they, uh, they have recovered. And therefore, uh, it, they are positive coming. If you look at the in terms of the people affected and people dying, it's, it's decreasing, really. It's decreasing. And, and that shows you exactly that there are some efforts. And I think this is where the international community come to support even developing countries like us mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with it. All right. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's hear from uh, Dr. Collins Odote. Good morning. Good morning, Dibad. We were here last week. Yes. And last week, uh, I remember some colleagues uh, on this show saying that, you know, this is not such a big thing. And I think that was also in the context of the kind of response that we were seeing from government. I am happy that a week later, uh, both our views and in her words, the economy will fall. She just doesn't know how far, and she doesn't know how long the impact will fall. Last week, the ban uh, was shared him to go to, as, as one of the newspaper articles says, the greatest spread of this is going to be travel and the hospitality industry. How we deal, how we monitor that process and how we deal with the unnecessary travel, I think, is going to be a critical issue. The second thing, is what amount of preventive measures that we put in place. Last week as we were here, I think there's a huge concern about what government was doing. A week later, it's extremely exciting to watch what government is doing. I think uh, our good friend, C.S. Mutaika, I think could not have gone to that minister at a better time. Uh, an excellent communicator mm -hmm. and somebody who reassures you when you're watching. So looking at the kind of communication he's giving, I think that's the kind of thing government should have done much earlier, but should continue doing consistent because there's a lot of misinformation first going on. There's a lot of helplessness. Uh, you've just had uh, Gituro saying that wear masks. Yet two days ago, 
I was watching some clip where somebody was saying that those masks actually don't help uh, and was making a medical argument. As a normal Kenyan, I don't know who of those two to believe. But if we get consistent information, we would know what to do. The third thing the band that is critical, Kenya is a travel hub. How we ensure that we limit the possibilities of that disease coming to Kenya is going to be important. But two, if it does, how we deal with it is going to be extremely critical because I think the levels of preparedness, even as of today, is not where it should be. Mm -hmm. You've heard, for example, countries saying, we are locking down cities. We are locking down schools. And I woke up and asked myself, I think I discussed it with my class, what happened but if they said today Nairobi is on lockdown? Mm -hmm. What will that mean for you and I in terms of our daily operations? Are we mentally prepared for it? Are we as a government prepared for that kind of eventual? Because I think with, with a lot of us are still behaving as if this is something that we're reading in the papers and that is happening somewhere else. It can't happen here. And I think we need to enhance the levels of preparedness and the levels of response. But the initial actions that the, the government has taken this week, I think it's reassuring. Mm -hmm. it's, also even it's also nice to see that uh, Parliament is allocating money uh, for, for this from around July, the next budget. I was happy to see that happen. Mm -hmm. But I think that I also asked myself, if, you know, between now and July is a long time away. So we should be talking about also the amounts of resources that we are setting aside to deal with the margins between now and July. All right, thank you. Kiprono uh, Kitoni. Um, thank you very much, uh, Debal. Um, first of all, I'd like to, you know, take the opportunity to thank, uh, appreciate uh, President Kenyatta for his recent appointment of uh, Mutahi Kagwe as the new CS for Health. And to also congratulate my friend Mutahi Kagwe, and like Mr. Odota, I agree that he is a highly proactive, uh, you know, highly respected uh, leader, and I'm sure that he, he will come into right. this ministry at right. a time that the country really needs that kind of leader. Um, let me say, you know, I think we need to look at this thing from a, the context of the globe and the context of Africa before we even look at our own country and the counties. Um, I, I, we don't know whether it is a fluke, uh, whether it is uh, insufficient uh, capability on detection, um, or, or just simply uh, luck that we have su such a low um, incidence of coronavirus in Africa today. Uh, I think there are only about three or four countries. Uh, I think yesterday evening we saw that Senegal has joined the list of countries that has got victims of coronavirus. Uh, but I want to say that, uh, you know, one of the resolutions that I took at the beginning of this year is that I will ch attend church every Sunday. And, you know, reading through the Bible, you know, and looking at the challenges that we are faced with today, mm -hmm. particularly uh, coronavirus and even the locust invasion, I think we are, we are, we are living, we are facing um, challenges of almost biblical um, proportion. It's in the last this, days. This is a keep I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time for everything uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes. Yes. So the, the thing is, um, you know, we really need to, be, to concentrate and, and really be focused um, on this matter of coronavirus. And I think that it, it's a big challenge uh, for countries that have got poor health care systems. Many countries in Africa have got poor health care systems. Um, we don't know what will happen if we have an epidemic of coronavirus in Kenya. Um, but I want to say also that the government seems to be taking it seriously. We've seen the initiatives they've taken. We have an isolation ward um, at the Bagathi Hospital. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, the Council of Governors convene a meeting to have a conversation around what to do in the event of, of the outbreak of coronavirus. We've also seen the government uh, reach out to those students uh, that are in uh, Huan, in China, and, and even extend funding to them. And of course, there are still questions out there, and the jury is still out about whether it was the right decision or not to allow the China air, um, air, 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 air plane to land in Nairobi mm -hmm. at a time such as this. But uh, suffice it to say that, uh, you know, I have a strong faith in the global uh, scientific and healthcare industry, and I'm sure that somewhere in the world, somebody is working very hard around the clock to ensure that we have um, some sort of remedy, some sort of cure, some so sort of... Uh, immunization regime mm -hmm. to protect us from coronavirus because at this point in time I think really we can only um, count on lady luck all right yeah. all right let's also hear from uh, Robert Shaw good morning good morning um, at the beginning of this year as many of us do we I looked at the uh, prospects of for the economy in particular for Kenya and was relatively optimistic I say relatively because like with all these things there's a caveat and I think somewhere in my wording I said you know all things being equal but of course you know um, the, the 
tourism was doing quite well, we'd had reasonable rains, etc., etc. But there's always a rogue factor. And I think what we're seeing now is the rogue factor. I mean, there's two at the moment, and it could really impact our, our economic growth. Coronavirus is obviously one, and, and, and the locust is another. Um, coronavirus, I think you've got to, to, to look at it in a very rounded way. It, it's got many effects. Um, it's affecting a lot of businesses here. If you, we all know that a lot of imports come from China. You can't really go around your house without seeing several items that, that have come from China. Um, I was somewhere the other day and I said to the person, do you have enough um, chlorine for the swimming pool? And they said, oh, gosh, I hadn't thought of that. And there was already a shortage. So there's a, there are shortages of a lot of, a lot of items. Um, and then it's going to affect our tourism. Um, people are already less in the mood for traveling. Um, and countries that are affected, particularly like Italy, um, are, you know, European countries, are, are you, you know, travel is, has come, is, is reducing. Mm -hmm. so, we, so it is going to affect it. And as you know, tourism is one of our, our, our biggest earners. So generally, in the economy here, we're going to see a slowdown. Um, by how much it's difficult to say at this stage, but if you put the factor in the locus, you know, you're, you're talking about two fairly big hits on it. Um, now, what could really hit us is if it literally hits us here. And what we've seen is that coronavirus does have a knack of spreading quite quickly. And yes, we have acted fast here, and, and, and credit should be given to that, but, but, if it spreads fast, if it comes, we don't even know now. Uh, or honestly, none of us could actually honestly say there are no cases here. We, we, we would like to think there aren't. Uh, officially, uh, it, we're told there's none. But we just don't know because the symptoms are symptoms that, you know, are quite common in a number of other things. So can we cope? If it hit us, I think we could be very, very tightly stretched. Remember, our medical, our, our, our health service, our public mm -hmm. health service, mm -hmm. for the majority of the people, is already very, very stretched. Medicines are hardly available. You quite often go, you will be told to get this and that, but it's not available, and you will have to go out and privately buy it. So you're going to see all sorts of things happening if that, if that took place. So I'm. I'm hoping we're not going to be af that affected, but I think we need to be, we, we need to look at the, 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 the darker side of this and say, well, what happens if it, if it hits us, and not just hits us in Nairobi, up country, could we cope? Yes, in Bugatti, that's fine. But what about, you know, um, Eldoret, mm -hmm. Kisumu, etc. So I think we've got to be very aware that this could spread. It is pretty contagious. Um, and that would, that would be a, you know, another very brutal uh, hit on, on the whole of the economy, mm -hmm. as well as on the, the social, you know, everything basically in, in the country. Right. Uh, do you think maybe we are really slow for the mark as far as also making sure that the social interventions or s social distancing measures are taken? Because other governments that have, have done so, we understand uh, in Uganda right now you're not supposed to actually to hold any public uh, rallies as it is or public uh, gatherings. They've actually banned that for now. Tanzania also is advising people not to, uh, you know, uh, also appear in a, a public gathering. We know uh, South Korea. Also, the government has invoked the power to forcibly stop any public activities, uh, such as uh, mass protests, uh, schools, uh, airports, and military bases are closed. Uh, Italy was said also on Tuesday to close all schools and universities for two weeks across the country, where more than 2,500 people are infected and 70, 79 are dead. Uh, that is the highest number so far in Europe. I know in the United States now it's, it has risen to 11 uh, from 9, uh, which was yesterday. And uh, also Italy is mulling over to ban kissing as well and uh, handshakes uh, to limit the virus uh, spread as well. 
so, so, social uh, distancing measure, uh, how should we fare, especially in light of the BBI rallies that we do have uh, right now? <laughs> let, me, let me just uh, you know, weigh in on that. Um, firstly, to say that uh, you know, the effect on the economy is, you know, cannot be gainsaid. I mean, if we look at the, the reality, I think no measures should be, uh, nothing should be left, and no stone should be left unturned insofar in so as um, trying to deal with uh, the potential of an epidemic of coronavirus. Um, and like Mr. Shaw said, I mean, the pathogen of coronavirus actually is such that the symptoms are very difficult to detect. So mm -hmm. it is actually very difficult for us to tell if for certain we actually have no infections. Um, but if we look today, I mean, very many um, global conferences are being cancelled. I mean, very recently we had the uh, GSM conference in Barcelona, which is one of the largest uh, mm -hmm. exhibitions for the telecommunications industry, cancelled. Uh, closer to home, we have the Great Lakes Private Sector Forum in Kigali, three weeks from now, that has been uh, postponed indefinitely. Uh, and I think that uh, it's, it's a very responsible thing to actually reduce uh, the number of public gatherings. And, um, you know, like I, I also share the view that uh, the impact on the, on the travel industry, particularly on airlines, mm -hmm. many airlines ac across the globe are tottering on the, on the verge of bankruptcy. And uh, your guess is as good as mine about what the impact will be uh, to the airline industry globally. And uh, we know, including our own national airline, mm -hmm. Senior Airways, South African Airways, uh, literally on the verge of, of, of bankruptcy. So, I mean, it will have serious effect and consequences because we have a lot of hotel groups also investing in infrastructure in Kenya and in many other parts of, of, of Africa. Um, but also, uh, you know, let, let me just say that uh, for me, nothing should be left um, unconsidered. I mean, the, the social distancing should be a major aspect of the uh, attempt to prevent ourselves from getting coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I'll close by just saying it's very disconcerting to see the political class continue to clamor around the BBI like it is something uh, you know, this reggae, can it be stopped or mm -hmm. can it not be stopped? I think to me, mm -hmm. frankly, the coronavirus and the locusts mm -hmm. are more important. And there's Should other ways, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that we can mobilize uh, public uh, participation around the BBI uh, initiative. Right. So do you think also we should go with the social distancing measures? I, I as completely as as ascribe to that. Yeah, yes. and, and next yeah. time you invite us, please have a mask for us. Uh, for you now, how, you, you seem like you're gagged. How will we even uh, hear voices? Because well, the advantage of that is that you can pass on some yeah. of the more intelligent contributions, <laughs> apart from Mr. Shaw's, as uh, uh, your own. <laughs> <laughs> because it's preventive. I, I think that's a point we're making. And when you have something which is preventive, I don't think a uh, show you can go to the, to the shops and buy anything about it. So it's just preventive. Mm. And I think what we need to do is preventive. And it's worrying at this stage when you still, and I think Kip, I agree with you, when you still have this mass gatherings. I think that's something we should come up very clearly. And that worrying thing, in, and we are neighbors, is Ethiopian airlines are still making trips to those areas. Mm. That, that's an open for us. Because it's easier for me even to go by road from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It's easier to take ET to Nairobi. So there are certain things we need to take consorted efforts. Because the whole problem with this is, and I'm sharing earlier on, these guys are literally greeting with their leg. is how serious it is. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, had dinner with somebody from China on Monday, and he's telling me, he's a student here, he's telling the mother hasn't gone out for almost a month out of the house. So is that serious? And I think we need to take it to another level. BBI can take another a back seat, and we deal with this, what we have. Mm -hmm. It's just preventive than anything else. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you, there are certain uh, uh, things we, we, we can deal with. Kissing can hold until perhaps sometimes back, mm -hmm. uh, all those kind of things. But I think it's more personal hygiene. I had an opportunity to travel on Friday to Tanzania. And for once I became very conscious what was surrounding me. It was interesting when at the airport we had some Chinese and they could see everybody look at them suspiciously. Uh, which perhaps is not the reason. But I think we need to take certain steps which would help us to, to deal with it. The right. good thing is it's preventive. It is preventive. Right, uh, Colin Zadote, uh, just hold on to your point. We take a short break right now. When we circle back, we continue with more. Plus, looking at uh, how East African traders are uh, panicking as four Chinese ships uh, fail to dock. Uh, that is uh, another story. That also you need to grab a copy of the East African for that particular story. Shortage of goods and price increase loom as deadly infection spread or spreads across the world and city lockdowns disrupt global supply chain and also you remember on tuesday on front on the front page of a business daily taskies 
and other retail shops, that is uh, Nivers as well, are warning to raise prices over coronavirus as well. So maybe we'll have people being adversely affected by that. So how are we preparing in light of that? So we take a short break and uh, when we circle back, we continue with more. You're watching In The Market here on AM Live. The blind man told police officers, I've had the Mimi Sijawai on a bank in my shayangu. It's on my award. Zika fanya watu wanze kuimbia award. Badala wa imbe the award. Mimi mwiki nichagua mutaona miujiza. Anajifanya squeezy. Kach! Kibi ya manamocha. Na wakopa mwenyezi mungu. Na ujimoto pekeaki. Iyo si bangi. Jebali ya na mchumba mwingine? Mambo ya wasichana uwa hana. Ngumu sana kujua. Shika hii. Na kuomba usiambe ya mtu. Masana. Ndiyo. Jebali yuko wapi? Utampigia ama haumpigi? Uyu hapa kwenye magoti yangu. Niyache mimi ni msambazie maumivu yule mpaka kitoka hapa enda kafulie mbali ukombele. With Lipa na M-Pesa, you get more. Every 100 shillings spent on Lipa na M-Pesa earns you an entry into the draw. Do more with Lipa na M-Pesa. Building tips for high-rise buildings should be bought from reliable sources. Strength of the cement must be a minimum of 42.5. Sufficient curing time with constant pouring of water must be kept certified. Exactly 50 kilograms guaranteed in each bag. Adding strength to Kenya's landmarks. Power for specialized constructions. Cementing the nation's future. Simba Cement, the strength and pride of Kenya. Now also produced in Nakuru and Mombasa. Discover the all-new Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Lotion. Specially formulated with Nivea's Deep Moisture Serum and Africa's Natural Cocoa for 48-hour deep moisture. Glowing radiant skin with Nourishing Cocoa Lotion from Nivea. Get 48 hour deep moisture from the new range of Nivea body lotions. Kuna mtu kwa yoenda Italy? Unaenda nana? Angalia kwa kiyo. But unajua vizuri sana. Na mina yotu likotumia plan vacation. Together, tunda Italy. Now you know how it feels to be jealous. So anaza kuwana? Unataka mimi ni kuje kwako? Hmm, kuja. Ever since Brahio Alanduku umekuwa mdesperate. Kila saa mara mko date, mara mnafanya ni? Unta kurudi kamiti nini? Kajua kamiti ni home. Kwa umerudia wizi, utabidibasi umeachana sera. Ito ito present. Imeandi kwa PB, PB na manisha nini? Back you're watching in the market here on AM Live, and I'm holding court this morning with Dr. Geturo Wanaina, who is the chair of the Kenya School of Government, also a lecturer at the University of Nairobi School of Business. We have with us as well Kiprono Kitoni, who is a businessman, also the, radio, the chair of uh, Radio Africa, and also the vice president of World, uh, Federation, World Chambers of Federations. Also, we do have with us Dr. Uh, Colin Sodote, who is a lecturer at the University of Nairobi, a columnist with the Business Daily, and also we have Robert Shaw with us, who is a, a columnist with the Daily Nation, and also a policy and economic experts. We continue with our conversation, which is around coronavirus and how it's impacting our economy. Already we have warnings so far, as far as uh, import is concerned, at the port of Mombasa, East African countries, imports 
Uh, we know a wide range of goods from China, including consumables, electronics, construction materials, vehicles, spare parts, uh, clothing manufacture, and we have uh, kitchenware, raw materials, and machinery. And according to the Kenya Ports Authority, they say the four Chinese ships that uh, were expected at the dock at Mombasa in January and February, uh, implying uh, we have around eight shipments that have failed to arrive during two months, right? Uh, most Chinese factories are on lockdown as Beijing scrambles to contain the outbreak, disrupting supply chains across the world. And a study by the UK-based uh, UK think tank, that is Overseas Development Institute, shows that Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda are among the world's 97 economies that are most exposed to a Chinese slowdown, either directly or indirectly. And we continue with the conversation at pace with our panelists on this. Before we took a short break, we were new on the daughter. Thanks, Dibar. Uh, I'd like to speak about the two issues. I'd like to speak about uh, social measures, and then I'd like to speak about the economic one. But let me start with the economic one. Over the weekend, I think on Monday, mm -hmm. in one of the newspapers, uh, somebody from the hotel industry in Mombasa was making the point that, you know, from around May, hotels are normally closed for purposes of it's the low season, so that's the time they do repairs. And his concern was well, that, you know, we might not even be able to do repairs this year. Mm -hmm. for, not because of lack of money, but because the goods that they use for repairing the hotels come from China. And that the possibility they may not be coming this time. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're thinking about that uh, at all. Uh, we, while we're appreciating government for the response they've had over the last one week, I think the response for has largely been health, health, uh, health response. How health prepared are we? Which is a useful thing. But I think we need to realize that this disease has many more implications. It has an economic implication. Our economic preparedness is important. It has a social implication. Our social preparedness is important. I don't think we are economically prepared. I don't think we are socially prepared. On Sunday, CNN carried a story about Milan. Uh, Milan is one of the cities that are extremely affected. And you could see that a lot of people were not on the streets. But what was hilarious, there was these people, I think from Montenegro, who were on the streets uh, kissing. And their response was, you know, this disease does not exist. This is a myth. Mm -hmm. uh, life must go on. I think there are quite a number of us who are still behaving as if this is a myth. Uh, and we need to start realizing this is not a myth. We need to start b being real. I kept asking myself, why are the countries that are locking, uh, shutting down schools saying they're doing so for two weeks? What's the magic about two weeks? But if you reflect, I think they're saying, we need a window for us to be prepared and know that this is how much we know before mm -hmm. things happen. Uh, when I and myself teach at the university, Last week, there was a conversation at the university in terms of asking the university itself, how prepared are we? I don't know what answer we have. Uh, I have kids that go to school. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether my, the schools that my kids go to know how prepared. But that's Nairobi. We haven't gone to the rural areas. How many parts of this country do not even know that coronavirus exists? Yet when we think about travel, we think about travel only here. The bar is only today that you hear government is saying, we will be able to, to find information about where somebody has traveled from and where they have gone to. If I traveled from Italy yesterday and I have gone to my rural village in Huisero, mm -hmm. who knows that I am in Huisero? Do the people of Huisero know that uh, coronavirus exists? If I refuse to greet them, Will they agree? You know, those kind of basic conversations. I think there are certain things that we must do publicly to be able to pass the information. That's why when the conversation about reducing the rallies, it's not a political statement. No, it's, it's about how do the politicians res make statements that enable people to realize the implication. Dibal, the Speaker of the National Assembly, did an excellent job in terms of saying we have canceled the trip to the U.S. for members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But what's the conversation about the trip? The conversation about the trip is not about the fact that it's a preventive measure. The conversation about the trip is, so what is the financial implication of the cancellation of the members who already had per diem? Let's, let's make this slightly more serious. Let's start discussing the kind of, because prevention, as we were told in very early days in primary, is better than cure. There are basic things we can do, Dibal, that will ensure we are more prepared and that we deal with the consequences, just as opposed to only focusing on where is the money for masks, where is the health facility. Let's do, why are people saying we're not, we are not saying hello to each other using hands? Mm -hmm. Why are people saying that we need sanitizers? In, in public facilities, for example, now all public facilities have sanitizers. Mm -hmm. Are they there in schools? 
Are there then schools of higher learning? Are there then public offices? You know, basic things. If you work in government, Dibal, you are exposed because the amount of visitors that you, you, you must treat them. Mm -hmm. Are they being uh, told, don't greet? Is that something that's being put in public? So when you don't greet people, they also don't think that you're being rude. Let's do some much more than just what we are doing currently. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot we need to do. On the economic front, you know, this virus is telling us, number one, that we are extremely reliant on China. Extremely. And people, the times people, be, I think it's last week when somebody made the important point, that, you know, we need to start, uh, it was the governor of Laikipia. Yes. We need to start asking ourselves, what is our, how much are we supporting the domestic industry to produce things? And I think the lesson this must also bring for ourselves, the more you don't support the domestic industry, it's not just uh, an, an economic issue. It is a livelihood issue. Because if you are relying on things like even matchboxes, if you're relying on toothpicks from those kind of, then it means that if there's a lockdown, you will lack even basic facilities. And I think our support to the small, uh, micro and small uh, enterprise industries, the kind of conversation government had last year, we must now take them much more seriously as a matter of also ensuring that we proof our economy from kind of responses in the long term. And that is a fantastic point he's making. I think there is a, an opportunity because of coronavirus, a huge opportunity. It's an upside of it. And I think he has hit it. And I think it's time we start thinking about being diversified in terms of our inputs. <laughs> we need to start thinking. We need to start thinking about how do we make trade within ourselves, the Africa free trade work. Because it's, we have reliance on one source. And I think as we look at this as it, I think we need also to spend, what are the opportunities? What are we learning from it? If you go to Zambia, you go to Marawi, you go to uh, Nigeria, we are dependent on this nation. How can we find an opportunity to start relying on ourselves and indeed putting so much effort in, in terms of our own entrepreneurs? Uh, and I think the, the conference which has just ended, KICC, I think these are the things we could talk about. How do we make our own people to be now? Instead of relying on China, I can get it from Uganda if it's cheaper. So there's also an opportunity right. we have to learn about so it. Robert, uh, did we now focus truly on, uh, you know, looking at the East, facing East, uh, as opposed to the West? I think that was also uh, uh, the mantra that we're using, facing East right now. And this is maybe the blowback of it, uh, where we are heavily reliant on the East. Now, uh, of course, we're coming, things are coming home to roost. Well, uh, remember whether it's East or West, uh, coronavirus is, is, is global. And... Uh, uh, you know, that's, I think, the thing, you know, if you look, for example, at the number of cases in Italy, and then you look at how dependent we are uh, in the north coast of, 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 of Kenya for Italian tourists, you'll see the, the, the hit. So I think that's just one, one aspect. But I think overall we must look at it. Kenya, Nairobi in Kenya is not just uh, a country in East Africa, it is a regional hub. This place, even if we've, we, we've stopped flights directly uh, from here to China and vice versa, there are many people coming in via Addis, etc., etc. So, because we are a regional hub, you know, many activities are based here. Uh, it's very difficult to actually be working in this region without going through Nairobi. Um, so we've got to, that's why I think we are regarded as being very vulnerable, mm -hmm. we are. I mean, I personally would not be wanting to walk around uh, Jomo Kenyatta Airport or even more International Airport at the moment. I just wouldn't because you don't know where different people have come from. You don't know their backgrounds. You can't stop people and say, you know, have you come from where? You can't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know that, that that interaction is there and that your, your risk factor is there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, so I think that's, the, you know, we've got to be aware that we, we are vulnerable. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've got to, and I think we're starting to get there, but it's taken a while. We've got to, as a government and as a country, realize that this, has got to be, this is on the, should be on the front page. You know, with due respect to BBI or, or, or the D, DP or whatever, or uh, Ryler, etc., 
this is the country, you know, we could, let's be prepared, let's educate each other about it. You know, I've seen some very good summaries of this. It's not rocket science. I mean, this, this, is, this is fairly elementary stuff and there's quite, you know, good preventive measures. And there are also, you know, in terms of, 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 of actual treatment, you know, there is quite a lot. Unfortunately, quite a lot of that is in China. Um, so we, we're not be, going to be able to source that very easily. But, you know, I think we just generally need to be much more prepared and aware. When you walk out and talk to people, they, they don't really see it as, as a serious thing, you know. Um, and I think that comes partly from government, because government didn't take it seriously at first. Uh -huh. um, and so this public education awareness, I think, is absolutely vital. Because, yes, it's not just the economy. You know, our schools could shut down. Can you imagine if all our schools shut down? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just that alone, that has a huge impact. So I think we, 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 we you know, and, and preparedness in other ways as well. One isolation center, hold on. Mm -hmm. What if it really did take place? Let's be prepared and have several in different areas, just in case, you know, mm -hmm. just in case. We don't want to, to, to be accused later, or the government certainly shouldn't want it to be accused later, of taking, doing too little too late. And at this stage, we don't know how big or how little that the impact of that is going to be on this country. But let's be, let's be cautious and say it's going to hit us uh, health-wise. And therefore, let's be a little bit more prepared than we are at the moment. Right. Yes, I want to make uh, three very quick points uh, on this conversation of uh, coronavirus. Um, you know, we've had a conversation in this show about the Big Four agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all, I think I shared my views and my opinions about, uh, you know, the, the likelihood of Kenya being a serious manufacturing country. And I said to you, I don't think that's in the horizon. I mean, if countries like South Africa that have much more, you know, stronger manufacturing bases and ourselves are actually, you know, rolling back because of the global uh, liberal trading regime. I also shared my view on, on housing, saying that, you know, that should really be left to the private sector. There's no, there's no emergency in trying to say, let's achieve this within now and 2022. And I think the numbers uh, speak for themselves. But, uh, you know, to the topic of um, universal health care and the topic of um, um, food security. I think there's a huge opportunity for us as a country to transform ourselves on those two pillars. And on, on primary health care, I mean, I think and I've said this before, you know, the primary health care is actually, there is empirical evidence that primary health care um, has a very direct uh, impact and consequence on the, on the health of a population. I think what we did as a country is, again, uh, you went, went for universal health care um, and went straight into procurement of the most expensive equipment and spread it around the country. So billions and billions of shillings have been expended um, on equipment. But actually, the reality is if we dealt with water and sanitation and the first line of healthcare defense, you will find that uh, we, will, we, will, we will have a, a far lower cost on trying to keep our population healthy. But if you go around this country, I mean, water and sanitation is still a huge problem. The sewerage systems are almost non-existent in our slums. If you walk around Kibera today, if there was an epidemic of any kind, I don't know what uh, the likely outcomes would be because the place is extremely unhygienic. The second point I wish to make is on information sharing. I think mm -hmm. at, a point, at a time such as this, it is very important that we are verifying uh, and actually ex uh, you know, uh, making sure that the information that the public has access to is accurate. It is devoid of fake news. It is devoid of propaganda. We need to ensure that the facts are out there. Mm -hmm. And one of the measures that the government has taken, and I think it's quite pleasing, is that we have a single focal point. We know that the World Health Organization has been issuing um, very regular information bulletins. They have an information toolkit that gives also guidelines mm -hmm. on response. So I think we need to control the information that's out there. We need to make sure it's timely. We need to make sure it is accurate and it is devoid of fake news and propaganda. And the third point I want to make very quickly is on the impact on trade. You know, Africa has a huge opportunity right now. And I think the fact that coronavirus has come and we've seen the vulnerability that we have and some of the examples that uh, uh, Dorote and, and, and Mr. Shaw have shared right now actually reveal the fact that we are extremely vulnerable to China. Mm -hmm. But again, let us remember that trade is influenced by demand and supply. People will go for 
the product that, that has the, the, the easiest uh, availability or at the best price. So Africa has a huge opportunity in actually looking at what our competitive advantages would be and actually rethinking this liberal trade regime that allows for the free movement of goods across the world. Uh, at a time such as this, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to look at what it is that we as Kenya can provide the region, how we can make the movement of goods and services easier within the context of the African continental free trade area. All right. Uh, maybe we can actually also uh, latch uh, on that particular issue of information sharing. Uh, first of all, uh, we think and we have a very good uh, salutary effort being put forth by the steering committee, uh, so far led by the, uh, the CS uh, Mutai Kawe. Mm -hmm. But in a world where this information on social media is already uh, a much used tool, uh, COVID-19 also, coronavirus uh, as it is, will provide also new opportunities for spreading fear uncertainty and doubt. And we've seen also uh, locally here some of the clips uh, from, from the slums where, you know, when we see uh, people from the Chinese uh, uh, nationality uh, being also ostracized and uh, castigated, uh, some of them calling them a corona, coronavirus, uh, how <coughs> should we try and also inform Kenyans that, uh, you know, this is not truly their making. Uh, it will have started uh, in our home as it is right now, but truly we cannot try and subject a uh, certain group or try and ostracize a certain nationality uh, because of uh, you know, the coronavirus as it is. Uh, how sensitive should we be in, in terms of information sharing and how frequent should that be, the updates that we should know uh, how to handle this? Because I think this is very critical. This is where also we can have diplomatic uh, tips between Ch Kenya and China because uh, of coronavirus handling. And it can be very straightforward, very simple. For example, a bar of soap. It is one of the best preventatives. Washing your hands. We're all told that we're supposed to be doing that frequently. But let's really emphasize that. Let's make sure. It, because, you know, as you were saying, these basic hygiene measures <laughs> are one of the ways that you can minimize it. I wouldn't say that you can get, stop it completely. And, um, you know, when you, when you look at, you know, the effect of soap on this, I mean, uh, qu quite honestly, it's going to do, there is one business that's going to boom here, mm -hmm. and that's any, anything to do with soap, the soap industry, because, you know, we're all being told, use that soap frequently, day in, day out, hour in, hour, you know, and uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the best preventatives. Mm -hmm. So I think just... You know, it, when you're talking about schools and any, anywhere where there's gatherings of people, that's very, very important that, 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 that you know, those facilities are there and it's emphasized that you just go for those. What should really be basic hygiene, sanitary measures. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's why somewhere like Singapore is doing quite well. Mm -hmm. Very well. I've seen in the papers about the warning from the PS internal security, the issue of not being against the Chinese and yes. speaking those kind of statements because I think it's actually a dangerous thing. But I think we need to ask ourselves, what's the root cause of that issue? And that's what we need to deal with. The root cause of that issue is something extremely basic, lack of information. Lack of information. And we're told lack of information is a dangerous thing. But if you look at this show, every day we come, we get a copy of this constitution. Mm -hmm. This constitution is published by an organization called Ura Uraia, whose only duty is civic education. If you take us back to before the 2010 constitution, you could not get a copy of the constitution. You know, the basic things, and I remember uh, requesting the CS for health, uh, that one of the things he should, you know, basic things like, have you seen any flyer at the bar anywhere mm -hmm. on coronavirus? Just a one sheet. Uh, Robert makes the point, which is extremely fundamental, about soap, about uh, washing hands. You know, ev almost everybody has water. Almost everybody has soap. But do they know that uh, by washing their hands and uh, using soap, they're preventing the disease. I bet you, Dibal, 70% of Kenyans may have no idea. Mm -hmm. They actually think that this thing is only treated by medicine. That's the only thing to prevent it. Yet the basic things we can do, I think we need to invest a lot on civic education, on providing basic information. Let's have massive productions of just a one sheet on the kind of things to do. Give it to schools so that every teacher can know what do we need to so when you now give the, when you now tell the ministry of education supply them also with with uh, sanitizers supply them with soap and water every morning they can relate that to what is happening let's have advertisements in the media if you watch cnn today 
almost every five minutes there is something on coronavirus, which is just a basic advertising. If you watch our basic news, I don't think that there is that kind of periodic information. It's only when we do so that we'll also be able to tell people that, by the way, uh, the, it, the virus is not being carried by Chinese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this virus is global. It's global. Number two, the Chinese that you are ostracizing, some of them have been here for extremely long. I think over the weekend, as we were uh, having a, a news item on it in one of the media, they were talking about some Chinese guy who is working in, on Thicker Road, and he hasn't been to China for several months. So the, uh, ostracizing Chinese will not help you. I think it, it, it is actually much more dangerous. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to focus on the right thing. It's important for us to give people information so that they don't work on the basis. You know, if you, give, if you don't give me information, I will assume, and unfortunately when people assume, we then go to the wrong place, which is to then target the Chinese. For no, and and we have a lot of ways, and I think keep you a spot on, when we talked about the big four. It was more towards preventive, but I think we had people see it as, as equipment. And beauty of preventive, you don't have to do that. And I think the point we are making here is we could even use our, our, uh, the platform we have for Mpesa. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, uh, short messages. Yeah. Every time we are giving information about it. And I think, I, I, I go back when I got married. We are told three things. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Three things. If you do that, cool. and this is what I'm saying, let's use even the social media we have. Mm -hmm. We know government has information and communicate. That information given to the people becomes important. And I th at one time, as we were having uh, dinner with this gentleman from China, has a Chinese ambassador probably come and talk what, what's all about it? I think that would be important in, in my view. But the other important thing, and I think this is perhaps something, I don't know how we look at it, and uh, it's affecting the whole world. So this time it's not Africa. I, I, I remember, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to thank from later. We always used to be Ebola, Ebola yes, in Africa. Yes. So even when you look at the downtown of the, the, the economy not performing well in the world, it's affecting everybody. So it's important perhaps to appreciate that uh, uh, and it, it is something we should learn very strongly uh, and uh, that how prepared are we as a world. Mm -hmm. And that's going to happen. This might not be the last one. Let me just, let me just say something on the, on the negative, negative profiling of the Chinese. Um, it's a topic that I discussed a lot when I was the uh, uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce. One of the big problems that we have with the, Chi the Chinese is an important trading partner for Kenya and is a major global uh, economy today. The problem that we've had in, in Kenya with the Chinese community is that there's many Chinese in Kenya engaging in very mundane activity that is in conflict with what the local people are doing. <coughs> and this is something we've had a conversation around and it's something that even the Chinese government themselves have been addressing. I don't think Kenyans are very happy when you see a forklift driver from China, when you see Chinese now starting to, you know, uh, vend, you know, their, their fast-moving consumer goods on the streets, competing with our, our you know, uh, really small traders. So that's been what the, one of the challenges that we've had. But let's shift a little bit from uh, defining the problem to the opportunities. I see an opportunity. I mean, and we've got to always think of what, uh, you know, the flip side of every situation is. You see, we must uh, contend with the reality that may maybe schools will close. So there will be a huge opportunity in virtual learning. We need to uh, prepare ourselves, like the public university, need to prepare yourself for a time when you can continue to offer your courses without actually having people in a lecture room environment. There are opportunities in e-commerce to ensure that goods and services are, de are, are delivered to homes. I mean, today, I mean, you can, you can actually purchase a lot of con uh, goods without actually going to a supermarket. So there is an opportunity in e-commerce. There's an opportunity in manufacturing of hygiene products. There's an opportunity in the entire hygiene industry in training and facilitation, capacity building. So I want to say that they, uh, right now, as we are dealing with one of the se most serious um, healthcare uh, challenges in the recent past, there are also opportunities for those who want to get into business to ensure that they are providing the services and the goods that are required. And even looking at the possibility of working from home. Those mm -hmm. of us uh, owning businesses, here. yes. It's on page 28. The mm -hmm. future of work. People the future work is from anywhere from at any time. Yeah, my, my, one of my daughters uh, recently got a job, and uh, the job provides that she only goes to the office half the time. So half of the week she's in the house, and I, I keep asking her, what are you doing in the house? And she's working. Mm -hmm. And, you know, probably doing more work than I am driving around and uh, thinking I'm doing business. 
Yes. It is true. And I think uh, most companies right now also, they're trying to streamline that. If we can actually work from home, do yeah. that. Uh, but let's try, as you're looking at the opportunities as well, investors also have sensibly tried to... Uh, to calculate which assets actually we are most exposed. We don't have the energy today. What's oh, happening most, with you? Most exposed to, to, to the shocks as well. <laughs> so I wanted just to ask, uh, because we can see most people, also, they're putting a lot of premium to, to the gold, uh, selling off their stocks as well. Could we try and see the shocks uh, around also uh, the, the, the market as it is right now? Let's hear from uh, Collins. Dibal, I don't know. I think the last one we have watched too much of CNN. And when this thing started and the response of America was like ours, no, it is not too great. I think the one place, there's somebody called Quest Means Business. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you watch Quest Means Business, uh, one of the things that showed that this is actually a serious thing was the stock exchange. Uh, the heat that it had on to stocks was extremely huge. So I think there are several assets that are going to suffer. I think the stock market is going to suffer. Uh, the short term because uh, you know it responds to a lot of temporary perceptions mm -hmm. what really happens in the temple I think that's gonna suffer a huge 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 bit I think the other place that may suffer a huge huge bit is the real estate sector mm -hmm. uh, Kipronos uh, favorite one for the private sector away from the four big fours the one of housing and mm -hmm. I agree with them except that you remember the last time we were here I said I don't think we should focus on anything more than one we should only focus on universal health care but I think the housing sector uh, real estate is going to suffer I think uh, the tra transport industry is going to suffer I think uh, the hospitality industry is going to suffer those four mm -hmm. are likely going to be subject to a lot of shocks but the ball because we live in a global world. You know this thing called globalization, yes. we take it for granted. Because we live in a global world, this is going to affect almost every other sector. Uh, Kipron has just been talking about uh, education. We don't know the impact it's going to have on the education sector in the short term. Because if, for example, schools are closing for two weeks, I was having a conversation last night. Uh, my son just finished uh, Form 4. Yes. There's a huge number of Kenyans who go abroad to study for higher education. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for parents who are looking for schools uh, this year out of the country? Are you going to look for a school in, if your child is undivided in Italy? What does that mean in terms of their travel? So that's going to, you've seen what's happening in the supermarket industry. You've seen the conversation about uh, the task is saying that we are laying off stuff. While it might not be related, what in the short term it's going to mean that some of the goods that people are looking for that come from some of the countries will not be available. It therefore means that product, that uh, the money circulating in the economy will reduce. So I think there are uh, sectors that I've mentioned that are going to suffer much more, but this effect is going to be much greater than that of few sectors. And that's why for me, I think there's a call for ensuring that the task force that was put by the president, as it focuses on the emergency aspect of it and preparedness, we must worry about also the economic implications and start preparing ourselves for it. Right, Robert. That comes on to a very important point, is that we are going to have a slowdown, a dislocation economically. And there were several things at the beginning of the year that were looking more positive. I think uh, our economic managers in government and uh, central bank, etc., need to think uh, a little bit out of the box. If I was looking at this economy now, I would say, what could I do to pick it up a bit? Mm -hmm. Because it is definitely going to slow down because of all of these factors. A further reduction in the base rate. So I think we've, got to, we've really got to look at it and say, right, what can we do to actually counter, if you like, um, the, the slowdowns that there's going to be? Is without doubt that is going to happen, mm -hmm. and therefore, you know, make it a bit easier to do business. If your if your if your interest rates come down a little bit more, that that improves or increases uh, lending opportunities, that increases uh, economic activity. So I think we really do need to 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 to, to look for measures to to keep this economy moving in the right direction. It's, it, this is going to be a hit. But, but let it, let it, you know, let all the number of other positives that we've got going, um, uh, you know, work. Let's, let's encourage them. And one of the things is, is in, you know, 
try and keep commercial activity going. Where I'm uh, quite concerned, because we don't really, our tourism industry has had a good pickup mm -hmm. for the last couple of years, and it, things are looking good, is it's, it's going to hit that, without doubt. Um, and again, let's look at the other side of that. The tourism industry still needs to look at itself much more carefully and say, what, how can we, even when we have a tough time, how can we pick things up? I've argued for a number of years, um, and I'm sure my colleagues here will share the same sentiments, that you know, when we, we are told that um, you know, residence rates, um, etc., and we look at the rates, and then we ask the, the, the person who's just arrived from Germany or the States what they pay, we find out that we paid more. Um, there's a lot of, you know, I think tourism has also got to say, right, let's use this as an opportunity to market more domestically. There's a lot, there's, you know, there's a growing middle class here. Right. You know, let's try and stimulate it. So I think, I think with this, we've got, to, we've got to go onto the other side and say, right, we've got this hit, but now how can we improve a number of things here so that the economy at least isn't going to get hit as bad? Mm -hmm. And that projection that we got also from uh, Kristalina Jojiva, the IMF uh, the director right now as it starts COVID, will slow the growth in the world economy below 2.9% as, as projected, uh, uh, as posted last year. How are we, in light of that information, also bound to prepare ourselves? Just adding on to what uh, Robert is telling us. Because uh, we, it's, we are going to get a, a bind. I, that I is for sure. Yeah. I think borrowing on from uh, Mr. what Mr. Shaw has just talked about, you know, Africa is sort of living through a self-fulfilling prophecy of, of pessimism. Mm. I've been uh, in South Africa last week, and I mean, the sheer amount of pessimism that we have in our, our people is, is uh, mind-boggling. Uh, I, I wrote an article in the newspaper a few weeks ago about just the need for us to talk a more positive narrative about our country. Mm -hmm. And I think to me it would be responsible when we are dealing with the challenges that we have now, particularly the, the, the coronavirus and the locust invasion and the, out, you know, the, the likely out, uh, impact of the economy, to actually conduct, for the government to now conduct an economic impact assessment. Mm -hmm. We need to actually know in Kenya mm -hmm. how this is going to affect uh, our, our outlook for this year. Are we looking at uh, reducing the, the growth uh, expectations? And how are we going to contend with the challenges? Is it going to impact on uh, the ability of Kenyan exports accessing foreign markets? Because that there is already, like you've seen, four ships uh, from China not docking in. Mm -hmm. How about uh, the reverse? I mean, the, the Kenyan flowers accessing foreign markets, our coffee and our tea, and the tourism and the impact that it has had. Um, but speaking generally about the economy, I think there is a, a lot of opportunity. And there are a few things that uh, you know, need to be done. Last year, I argued for an economic stimulus, and uh, I'm glad to see um, that the president actually, towards the end of last year, um, did something towards uh, creating a stimulus to, 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 to motivate economic activity and, and really improve the trading environment. One of the challenges that I, I mentioned last year, and I want to em emphasize on it again, is uh, because of the, the new constitution and the uh, layered structure of government, uh, particularly with county governments in place, we have massive overregulation. We have the National Assembly, we have the Senate, we have 47 county assemblies. What are they doing? They're legislating most of the times on how business should be conducted. So we are finding a situation where we are stifling uh, commercial activity. I think we need to seriously and actively look at reducing government. Um, the Commission for Re Revenue Allocation told us that uh, out of every 100 shillings collected in tax revenue, 45 goes to payroll support in national and county governments. In the BBI document, we would like to see um, what the government is considering in doing to reduce payroll. I mean, I think 45% uh, of one's tax revenue going to payroll is, is rather too high. We also need to look at uh, renegotiating our, our long-term debt because that also constitutes 57 of every 100 shillings that we are, we are collecting. Mm -hmm. We need to address the issue of payment cycles. I mean, the payment cycles are slowing down a lot of economic activity. And again, uh, to the credit of government, towards the end of last year, we've seen a lot of effort towards redeeming debt. And I talked about it many times. There's a lot of families in Kenya today that are in total despair because they haven't been paid. And they've been listed, they have their properties. I mean, if you look at the newspaper today, um, three or four pages comprises of auction, uh, auction properties. And many of these cannot find buyers. And I think that is even an article in today's paper. And finally, I think we need to seriously look at the potential of, of tapping our agricultural resources. 
I've said it many times before that we are just paying lip service to agriculture in Kenya. We are not serious. There's nothing different we are doing. I come from Transoya. There's nothing different we are doing in 2020 that we didn't do in 1975. When my father started farming in 1975, mm -hmm. the agricultural practices in that county are exactly as they were then. But if we wanted to be food secure and become an, a major exporting country for agriculture, we can be. But I think it's not been uh, dealt with in sufficient seriousness. All right. Dr. Kuturu Wanaina, especially now looking at the Nairobi Securities Exchange, we, we know uh, it is actually on, uh, on, a, on a way low status as it is right mm -hmm. now. Uh, and just adding up to what now coronavirus is bringing to bear as well, what does it portend? Maybe, uh, Kip, you can just latch on it and then we can... Not. I sit on the board of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Yes. And despite the bear run, Nairobi Securities Exchange is the best performing boss in the continent of Africa. Yeah? Let us take credit for that. We are the best performing uh, boss, giving the best return to investors. Let us also remember that there is a sick, uh, investment is a, sick, is a cycle. There are times when, you, you know, when the prices are high, investors will realize their return by selling. When they sell, uh, the prices drop. It is just an effect of the demand and supply. So we, ha we actually do have a very good market. We have a very innovative uh, stock exchange in, uh, in Nairobi. And recently, when we were in Botswana, actually we were commended for being the most innovative exchange in, 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 the, in the region, in, in, in Africa. But then the thing that we need to do is probably garner more... more, more regional bosses. We need to actually look, because we don't have enough economies of scale, we need to look at, you know, roping in regional economic players to, uh, to one market. But mm -hmm. then there's a lot of opportunity in the capital markets. Right. But what really is informing the blue chip uh, stock plunge as it is right now? It for, is almost, no, for almost uh, 10 good years, we, we've never even have any uh, new listing at the Security Exchange. There is a new window called Ibuka, um, where companies, uh, local companies, uh, family-owned enterprises and uh, other uh, organizations that wish to list are, are being introduced through something called Ibuka. And this is a preparatory window in order to get a uh, bigger uh, pipeline of companies that will list in the years to come. But uh, let me just say that, uh, you know, 70% of the investment in the Nairobi Securities Exchange is foreign capital. Foreign. Only 30% is actually local Kenyan money. So you see, these are global players who are moving their money in many frontier markets. Kenya is just one of them. So when the prices go up, uh, they make decisions in foreign capitals and they sell. So we find it going up and down. And that is the nature of trading. You see, you've got to look at it. In it's a long game. It's not a short window. I think the mistake that people make is that they, when, when they see a bear run for a, a short period of time, they think that it will always be like that. Actually, my, my message to Kenyans today is the right time to buy stocks is when the prices are low as they are today. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think one thing I would probably expect uh, keep being the, the board to make that statement. I think saying, and I've said this before, keep, uh, it's a good barometer. In a securities market, it's a good barometer for the European economy. That we are performing here in Africa is the same narrative we had for 24 years. Kenya is better than Somali. <laughs> you know, uh, so we, I think we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, keep it. <laughs> but there's something I, I, I think I need to read this one because Keith brought it. It's in the uh, it's in the business daily. Student can sign in, attend class, engage tutors, and submit assignment without having to be physically present in class. This enables them to meet the minimum threshold for classroom, so they only go for the exam. That's using AI. So there are opportunities there, and I think one of the things I think in the, we need to perhaps to use in the NFC. How do you leverage on technology? I was actually talking to other my student the other day. You know, if you send the young people to respond to you through the email, they don't open the email, mm -hmm. but they respond in WhatsApp. How do you leverage on that? Mm -hmm. But the question you're asking about the, 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 the issue of uh, NSE, I agree with you. It's somewhere we probably need to jump start it. 16 years, that's too much. We need to get an IPO. But there are three things which I really want to, to share here. I think the most fast thing we need to do and you ask a very question. We are in it. And it's going to affect, this coronavirus is going to affect the trading. It cuts across. We have seen that in China. Mm -hmm. We have seen that uh, in other markets. First, as a country, we need to focus on the issue of allocating productive allocation of resources. I also have the last, the other tweet we had, the uncreamed asset. They were yesterday in the National Assembly. They said, we want to reduce funds we have to productive sectors. 
that's something we can do as a country and cushion as ourselves. That's the conversation we were having uh, the other week. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think parliament should have no problem in allowing that. Mm -hmm. The second thing I think in my view is important. We need to focus on the counties. And I think keep your right on. Agriculture happens at the counties. If we can focus on we cushion ourselves. By the way, the best medicine for preventive is food. And particularly when you eat the right food like domangwashi. Those are the most. So I think they need that. Thirdly, it gives an opportunity when you're dealing in a country like China where we have a lot of repayment. Is it time to think about rescheduling our payments? Because the economy is hit. Mm -hmm. So if we can actually think about this, even the other development partner will some. And, and, and it's also affecting them. So to me, those are the things we can actually question ourselves. But one of the barometers we need to work for is NSC. There's something I can't say right now. Because if you don't see an IPO or a rights issue for that time, there's something we need to do within the stock market. Uh, maybe it's the issue also of uh, information, uh, that uh, a lot of people think uh, that this is a, a sort of a, an elite class uh, okay, product I, that can cannot really to relate to the NSC common monarchy. So in terms of also civic education on the yeah. NSC, uh, mm. is the NSC doing a, the opportunity a, a good there. job in, in informing yeah. Kenyans that yes, uh, they, a lot of these things you talk about, derivatives, they go way over you know, our heads as, uh, as Kenyans. Uh, the green bone stocks, uh, these are big words. The Maybe sometimes you need to... The ball, that information is out there. Sorry, Collins was about it. Uh, I was about but, to give uh, uh, Kiprono some, info, some yeah. advice, but let him go first. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very quickly, just uh, <laughs> you know, on that issue of Kenya and Somalia, I, I, you, know, you, know, you know Prof here was my teacher, so he's <laughs> bullying me actually. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, you know, um, there is a, Kenya is not in a bad place in the stock exchange. I mean, information is out there. The information is at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. The information is online. The question is, are Kenyans participating? And you know, one of the things that many people don't want to list, like, one of the reasons many farms don't want to list in Kenya is because of governance. People are, are averse to good governance. You see, when you list your company, you are obliged to, be, to conduct yourself in a certain way from a governance perspective. Kenyans are not prepared for that. <laughs> And that is one of the challenges that we are facing. And again, there is empirical evidence that companies that are well governed give a better shareholder return and, and survive in the longer term. Yes, Collins. Well, the, the advice that Kiprono has given in terms of the performance of the stock exchange, I think is spot on. The reality is that we are still performing but is amongst the best in Africa. But you know, even stock exchanges that are performing better than us are also suffering from the effects of this virus. So I think that's the context which you must be able to operate. That's number one. But number two, the sto to respond to your question about information, I think it could not have been said much better. Mm -hmm. The amount of Kenyans who got in the stock exchange from 2003 to 2007 is unprecedented. Uh, the first time of NAC, uh, NAC government, many people got into the stock exchange. I can assure you, those people have largely been disappointed because their perception of what they thought the stock exchange is and the reality, they say, for ground, which is different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the reality has been extremely different because a lot of them bought shares which have continued to underperform 10 years down, down the road. So I think the challenge for the people at the Nairobi Stock Exchange is to realize that the events after 2007 gave them a beating that will take a long time to bring in ordinary Kenyans back to the Stock Exchange. The Wainainas and myself, who understand economic fundamentals, will be able to invest now when there is a bear run. But your ordinary Kenyan will not touch the stock exchange with a 10-foot pole. And I think civic education is much more important so that you're able to bring those people back. Because mm -hmm. only when we bring them back that we bring confidence in the stock exchange. Then, if, if there's an IPO today, there will be no excitement for people to run to it. Maybe that's why there's been no listing. Then when you heard that X was listing, people didn't even want to know which company it was. They didn't even read. They just said, there's an IPO. I will, make, I will double mm -hmm. my money. So I think... Asking ourselves, how do we bring people back? Dealing with the governance issues is one, but also dealing with the, how companies are run. Because some of the companies that people bought in have never recovered from the mismanagement that happened thereafter. So that the IPOs were largely an excuse to offload a bad performing company. That's what ordinary Kenyans like myself think about when we remember the stock exchange. So I think the challenge for you is how do we focus on governance of companies, how do we focus on communication that's in the long run? Because if we did, as opposed to whining about the challenge now, we'd actually be saying this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. This would be the time for everybody to get into the stock market because you know in the next 
few months or years when we turn around the coronavirus, the prices will go up. But I think it's about education, it's about information. All right, Robert. Yeah, I'm, I'd like to come back to this thing about, you know, this should be taken as an opportunity to stimulate. And let's take the word stimulate away. Let's use the word take the handbrakes off the economy, off economic activity. And we've mentioned several. Bureaucracy, county bureaucracy is unbelievable. It's, it's, it's excessive. We think central government is, is bureaucratic enough. Then as you say, as you were saying, you go up and look at some of these counties, it's unbelievable. It's smothering. Um, debt, I agree totally. We've got a lot of debt that's, that's, that's coming up and it's, it's going to put, it is a handbrake on the economy. Mm -hmm. See how we can renegotiate it and spread it over a longer period of time <coughs> so that debt is not such a big factor. You know, because at the moment we're paying so much, everything that's being earned, is a, there's a, a percentage going, a high percentage mm -hmm. going to repay the debt or we're borrowing more in order to pay yes. the debt. And the third thing is, is, is food, is, is agriculture. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yes. You know, we're importing most of our, our, our wheat. We import still large quantities of sugar. Can you imagine? Rice. I mean, we've got, you know, hectares and hectares and hectares of spare land for sugar and, and rice. If only we could get it right, you know? Um, so let's, let's really try to... to, 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 to to, to use this as an opportunity to say, yes, we've got, we've got a tough time, <laughs> so let's take the opportunity now of seeing how we can take the, the handbrake off, off a number of areas so that that will slightly or, or, or quite a bit counter the downturn that we're having <laughs> or, we, or we're likely to have from coronavirus, locusts, etc. Right. Okay, let's just see reactions also on Twitter, what uh, uh, of you is also are saying on Twitter. We have Governor the Dreamer saying, Inadequacies in the policy, legislative and regulatory framework, poor governance and mismanagement of companies and weak internal capacity of marketing of products and services, services dampened the growth and development in Kenya. We have uh, uh, Prince Vini Jr. saying, Keep should be well in the know that states' functions doesn't hold just because they are invasions or mystery uh, either way. Uh, uh, a little bit for keep there to decipher that. Also, we do have uh, Kipkazi, the chief, saying our vulnerability will be immense economically because of our over dependence on Im importation. Government should revive closed industries and operationalize so as to cushion us from the fatalities of outside markets grinding to a halt. Also, we have M MK, MKH saying politicians are so obsessively focused on BBI when we have looming crisis of coronavirus, locust invasion economy in uh, HDU, massive layoffs. Can BBI take a back seat? He asks. And then we have also Isaac Terra saying, Sense, how can we sing BBI yet we are at risk of dreadful virus? We have uh, Karinga Simon saying, Hapo Sawa Kabisa, BBI is a misplaced priority and shouldn't even be thought of. Uh, we have lots of issues that we need to deal with first. We still have the issue of locusts uh, not solved yet. And then we have also uh, Kennedy uh, or Morgan saying we should know the difference between what is done by the civil servants and what is done by politicians. Politicians in any way should not control civil service. Also we have uh, Eric Aluru saying we are 40 million plus. We can't all coalesce around one issue at the same time. Let some of us discuss BBI and some coronavirus, uh, uh, Dan Locus, EDC. We must deal with our challenges proportionately. Uh, this is what Eric uh, thinks. Also, we have uh, Corey saying, key institutions like State House, Parliament, and CBK should be moved away from Nairobi to accelerate growth of other cities. If coronavirus hits Nairobi, uh, if hits and Nairobi is put on lockdown, Kenya, uh, Kenya's economy will be severely affected, allow devolution to flourish, he says. Also, we have uh, Nicholas saying, coronavirus is so scary. Kuwata Jiri is out of my mind right now. This is what Nicholas uh, Kowecha thinks, the reactions here on Twitter. So, in a moment before we wind up, also, we'll just run you by uh, some instructions on how to protect yourself uh, from coronavirus, uh, since uh, also we need to do some uh, public awareness about this and educate the public. I think it will be remiss of us if we don't do it. But maybe we can uh, just give our closing remarks uh, as well and uh, comment also on what is on the front page of the Business Daily 
uh, today, I'll be remiss if we also don't really mention that. Uh, this also highlights where we are as a country. Uh, maybe it's a bellwether to just uh, uh, tell us more of where the true north of our country is, is pointing. We're trying to just retrieve that particular page quickly, quickly on the front page of the business. There we go. That is a 49, 499 Kenyans fall off the list of dollar millionaires. Uh, this is uh, a survey, economic slowdown, cuts number of those with net worth above 100 to 2,900. It says an estimated 499 Kenyans dropped from the rank of dollar millionaires last year, highlighting how the impact of Kenya's soft economy has had persons who each had a net worth of more than 100 million shillings. And uh, this is drawn from the Knights uh, Frank's World Report. Uh, we can just comment on that briefly. Also, this is just showcasing where we are at as far as the country is concerned. Dubai. Briefly, yes. And I, tell, I, I want to make one comment in response to that and then make my final comment. The first one is J.M. Karioke, 1975, uh, spoke about a country of a few millionaires and many million beggars. Uh, I think the fact that we have 499 dollar millionaires, uh -huh. if not more, A, is a levels of the state of the economy, but B is a levels of the levels of inequality that we need to address. The third thing is the fact that they are falling off means that the conversation we've been having on this show for the last uh, few years mm -hmm. is now being vindicated that our economy is actually suffering. Uh, so even, and it's suffering, not just the rich are also crying. Yes. So if they are falling off the list of millionaires, yeah, just show that we, uh, we, we, <laughs> need, we, need, we need to deal too many things. Well, on to my final comments, is Dibal. I think oh, two things. One is we need to uh, enhance our self-reliance as a country. So investments that ensure that we are much more self-reliant must be our greatest focus. I am looking at the next budget that's going to be put on out in a few weeks mm. to see what kind of measures are we taking to start that path to self-reliance. The last thing, on this show we have spoken about dropping some of the things on the big four. Yes. This is the opportunity, in my view, of dropping some of those things on the big four. If I was the president, I would now actually say, in light of the realities happening in the global economy, my focus is going to be on big one. And that big one has now been chosen for us, universal health care. Let's focus on it, let's deal with it, and let it then be the one that we use. Right. use it. Robert. Uh, well, I, I would, again, I would go back to agriculture. I mean, we've got so many opportunities there and so much demand. Um, you know, just look at your shopping basket next time you, you come out and your, your foodstuffs and just calculate how much of that is imported and shouldn't really be. I'm not saying that we shouldn't import, but what I'm saying is that we should be producing more sugar. Mm -hmm. We should be producing more rice. We should be producing more maize. You know, um, let's, and these are great opportunities. So I think we, 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 what, that's what we really need to do now, is, is take this, this hit that we're going to get as an opportunity to say, right, how can we improve um, and, and, and take away bureaucracy, et cetera, on, in a number of areas that are, that are actually holding back the country and the economy. Right, thank you. Okay. Um, three very quick things in conclusion. Huh? Number one is, you know, the, the story of the Business Daily about the 419, I mean, 499 dollar millionaires. Who cares about those dollar millionaires? Great, Let's great have big. a conversation about yeah. how we are going to lift this country yes, from poverty. Exactly. That's a big Num nonsense. Number two um, is the judiciary. I want to say that uh, we must entrench the rule of law in this country. And I congratulate Nelson Harvey for being elected as the president of the Law Society of Kenya. And I support his view that the president should actually work on getting those new judges in the bench so that we can actually speed up the judicial process in this country. And finally, markets are driven by confidence. Let us stop this self-fulfilling prophecy of pessimism. Let us speak a positive narrative about our economy. Let's look at the upside and work on that. Thank you. Gitura Wanaina. Yeah, quick one. I think uh, I agree. Keep the 499 is actually, I don't think, is a story. If you guys, they're almost having 50 trillion. How can we use that? And them having this kind of money. I think that to me is not a headline. But I think I want to make two things, food and manufacturing. Food addresses health. The other thing is, this is an opportunity to put more tariffs to boost our low cost. These companies which have been getting things, can we now as a government put tariffs, high tariff for products from coming from China or mm -hmm. other parts so that we boost our local economy. Let's all Kenya stay safe. And I thought you were going to read those things we can do. Yes, yes. I wish you can read them yes. so that we all get it. Uh, yes, and because of time. 
preventive measures are key. All right. And I thought you guys also will have handled uh, the issue of Auditor General. I didn't ask it because uh, we don't have an Auditor General right now. Next time some maybe. of you maybe have not even uh, enjoyed your dividends because uh, here, the Auditor <laughs> General has not really appended his signature on the financial reports as it is right now. But we're still watching the coronavirus and uh, I thought maybe it will be uh, of maybe useful to you to just know what to do. And uh, I just wanted to just read by you some of the things that we need to do. They say, and of course from this conversation, is wash your hands, wash your hands. Yes, yeah, san sanitizers now, they're available in the workplaces. How to protect yourself. Uh, frequently wash your hands with soap and water or clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub. Once your hands are clean, you should dry them thoroughly by using a paper towel or a warm air dryer. Maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing and sneezing. Make sure you and the people around you follow good respiratory hygiene. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue. When you cough or sneeze, then dispose of the used tissue immediately. If you have, you have fever, uh, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical uh, care early. Also, when to use masks. If you're healthy, you only need to wear a mask if you are taking care of a person with a suspected COVID-19 infection. Wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing. Masks are effective only when used in combination with frequent hand cleaning with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. If you wear a mask, then you must know how to use it and dispose of it properly. Traveling. And uh, they say do not cancel your travel plans, but take into account various restrictions airlines and countries have put in place practice hand hygiene while in a plane cabin or hotel and observe uh, coughing etiquette also stay clear of heavy or heavily impacted areas by staying aware uh, of the latest information on covid 19 outbreak and crowded areas especially people who are suspected to be infected and if you have traveled from a heavy or heavily impacted area monitor yourself for 14 days if you have a fever a cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention and call in advance and follow the directions of your local health authority. And of course, all this is from the World Health Organization. So there you have it. We shall be updating uh, you on this every day. And of course, you have also the ticker there showing you how globally the figures are rising or maybe they are plateauing and also what is happening in Africa, uh, Kenya, as far as infection is concerned and death, none has occurred so far, and we thank God for that. Right, we want also to show you what we have in the diary before we wind up uh, the show this morning. This is what will be happening today, this Thursday the 5th. Teachers Service Commission will be holding a stakeholders forum on the biometric teachers uh, registration today at the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, that is KICDC. Also, Office of uh, Dep uh, that is uh, Director of Public Prosecutions said to give a presser on NYS two prosecutions. So those are stories also will be following for you today here uh, on NTV. The hearing of a case attempting to legalize FGM in Kenya resumes today at the Milimani Law Courts. That also we are keeping a keen eye on today. We leave you the court of the day as well. And this is a post giver for you from Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda, saying development is about more than money or machines or good policies. It's about real people and the lives they lead. There you have it. Thank you for your valued company. I just want also to thank our panelists so, so much right now. I think I didn't take breakfast. That's why my energy yeah, levels are yeah, yeah. You to today. Do, you know, today you are not sounding <laughs> like yourself. Yeah. That's on Friday sometimes are very difficult, you know, a long <laughs> week. Yeah. But we thank God for breakfast that we have. I want to invite Absolutely. you as we go down. Thank you, thank uh, you. for that delectable discussion we've had. And uh, I look forward to more. And we pray that, yeah, these things just uh, tip us off and uh, resume to our normal lives. Right? Thank you. Great. Thanks, Debo. County arrive old age is a curse.
haswa zaidi kabisa ni hii kitu nywele nyeupe hii wewe ni mchawi kabisa pengine macho yanakuwa mekundu sasa unajua mtu akionekana na hizo characters wanafikiria kwamba ni mchawi the old live in fear their lives always under threat mtoto wangu ndio alinambia mama yake kwamba baba yako ni mchawi nimelala nyumbani mwangu nikiamuka ninakatwa mapanga kama hakutakuwa na mbinu ya kuzuia mauaji ya wazee baada ya miaka kumi ijayo kutakuwa hakuna mzee This week on Property Focus we are celebrating women in the built environment. Our first stop will be right here at the Jennifer Riria Hub in Nakuru where we'll be meeting with the doctor herself Dr. Riria and learn about this inspiring project. Next we'll talk to the wire chair about the welfare of women in real estate and then a chat with a top woman in the construction and manufacturing industry who's disrupting the building market with unique solutions winning gumi. Do not miss Property Focus for anything this Sunday at 5:30 PM right here on NTV. With Lipa na Mpesa, you get more. Lipa na Mpesa. Every 100 shillings spent on Lipa na Mpesa earns you an entry into the draw. Do more with Lipa na Mpesa. Once again, it's time to run at the Beyond Zero Half Marathon 2020. Come and run with us. I will run for a healthy lifestyle for the elderly. I will run for access to better healthcare. Register now at beyond0.or.ke. All Nairobi Sports House branches countrywide. Athletics Kenya Riyadh House or any of the registration centers countrywide. Beyond Zero Half Marathon 2020. I will run. This is NTV. A streak of shimmering blue marks out the Lake Victoria on the horizon. It's a vast cavity of majestic beauty, sprawled out and brushing up against undisturbed hills. The fractal fingers of its shorelines shelter the bays and the inlets, and small islands dot the open waters. This was the cradle of aquatic civilization dating back thousands of years, and their descendants still populate the lake shores, trying to make a livelihood as their ancestors did but much has changed the lake victoria was once a source of purity and life for the teeming hundreds who depended on it but so it was in those days years ago until a blight crept up on the waters now the lake is a receptacle of filth we're here to investigate the crisis lurking in the deep just how solid despite appearance the water is and the human cost of that contamination with the help of scientists from the university of nairobi's department of public health and toxicology and collecting samples from the lake shores in muhuru bay to jinja where the nile begins its journey to the mediterranean sea We set out to find out how man's poison has weakened the pulse of East Africa's blue heart. Every first light a flock of birds swoop into the shallows on the lake's shorelines in search of breakfast 
fishing for scraps while fending off competition. It's nature's cruel metaphor for a community's uneasy dance with fate. Local fishermen like Michael Otieno have a harder time finding anything at all. Apo mbeleni tulikuwa tuna iko na mapato. Kwa maana tulikuwa tunaweka nyavu karibu lakini tunapata samaki wengi tunauza hapa. Sasa ina lazima sisi tuchukue boat tuende mbali kabisa ndio tuende tupate hiyo maji safi ndio tuweke nyavu zetu. Sababu ndio tuanze kupata samaki. Tunaenda vitu kama 3 hours ndio tufike mali ya neti. Unajua tuna time na upepo pia. Upepo kianza kuvuma vuma mapema. Sasa tuendi huko. Tunawacha. The degraded quality of the lake's waters has made it that much harder for fish to breed. Now the talk of fishermen who ply the inshore bays is scarcity. And as such, the crumbling trappings of a way of life lie in plain sight. The most cherished fish, the tastiest, and the most valuable have disappeared. My name is Tom Guda. Tom Guda is the national chairman for beach management units in Kenya. It is not good enough now that the lake is very dirty and the shoreline is also very muddy. So fish like tilapia cannot find room to breed because they need shallow, sandy, sheltered bays to breed. So with that, without breeding, then no restocking. So let's fish, let's fish. So what we have now in the Gulf is kamongo, the lungfish. So when you find kamongo, the lungfish, like what I've told you, you only find it where it is dirty. Now we have lost labeo ningo. We have lost fuane. Those are the, the local names for them. We have lost mbiru. We have lost so much species of fish. In fact, if you asked the people that used to fish before we came, they will tell you they have lost over 20 species of fish. The Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute has been studying the lake. The problems anchored in the water and their effect on the lake's fish stocks. I'm Christopher Aura, Assistant Director of Freshwater Systems Research and also the Center Director, Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute, Kisumu. Now, as Kemfri, we undertake research involving water and the fauna. The health of the lake, as I would say, it's in a deteriorating state. And of course, from a layman point of view, you can look at the water transparent, the way the water is looking. Um, you would, uh, from the water color, will tell you what is the status of the lake at that point. Yes. In the years 2000, we used to have about uh, 2,000 tons of fish, or it was in the neighborhood of 159, 169,000 tons. But we have had a 20. 28% decline of fish catch. And right now, on average, we are having about one, 115,000 tons of fish. Yeah. 
Their research helps explain why the lake's native bounty, including the much sought after tilapia, known locally as ngege, has been dying out, and how man's hand wrote their doom. We are seeing more of tilapia being affected when we are talking about invasive species, water pollution, among others. And as you understand, tilapia is the most uh, important cherished delicacy because of its taste and because of just culture. What I may say more so tilapia is affected than the rest of the fish species. It's in part a fish eat fish story. The introduction of the exotic Nile patch, also known as Mbuta, unexpectedly ravaged the schools of the indigenous fish. A voracious predator, it feeds on much smaller fish and has been blamed for tilapia's decline. But while the Nile patch may have only rendered the coup de gras, the lake is dying and the humans, much more than the patch, are the villains. Here in the tropics, lakes are as imperiled as forests, and Lake Victoria is the one in deepest peril. Named after England's Queen Victoria, the view here is neither uplifting or imposing. Hints of its heydays now litter the shorelines, rusting boats wedged deep in the mud, the abandoned pyres, the testaments of a bygone era. The beaches, once filled with visitors, are now deserted and withered wastelands. It's hard to imagine that before the age of modern progress, the community drank and lived off this poisonous cesspool. But this transformation from paradise to purgatory has unfolded before Patricia Odongo's very eyes. Nakuja hapa 77. Napata kama maji iko kama maji ya fridge. Na mchanga tu inaonekana mchanga safi. Na samaki inakuja paka nje. 77 ilikuwa samaki nyingi kabisa kwa maana maji ilikuwa safi. Na siku hizi hakuna samaki. Because of dirty of water. So wanawataka tu nyavu iko ndani huko. Eh, wanaweka sateza juni wanarudia kuenda kuleta sibui. Alafu wanaweza kurudi hata na samaki mbili, tatu. Hakuna penye wataseka. Kwa maana samaki hakuna. Chafu iko. Takataka yote kwa maji. Kiringeti yote kwa maji. Usoma Beach where she holds out a living sits on the margins of Kisumu a city of about 750,000 people, according to the 2019 census. The lake is the soul of the city, providing water and food. But the city casts a large shadow over the lake and its future. The people have been sucking the life out of it. This heritage that God gave us in terms of Lake Victoria, how are we looking after it? And to what extent can we safeguard it for the future? You remember the biblical story. The man who gave certain, some of his servants different talents. We were given this lake, the second biggest freshwater lake in the world. And, and we are just not looking after it properly. When God comes to say, where is my lake? We say, here it is. Industrial pollution, untreated sewage and the still widespread practice of open defecation have made this stretch of the lake a toxic soup, teeming with evil. 
by the look of it, it looks like we have very high uh, algae. It's known that green algae would actually be resorting from uh, very high nitrogen levels and phosphorus, which essentially would be coming from organic waste. And organic waste, of course, would be generated from uh, human activities as uh, untreated sewer uh, uh, being uh, discharged to, to the water bodies. So we will test the water for microbial contamination that, of course, will be coming from uh, sewer, untreated sewer or direct uh, discharge and chemical waste that may be coming from industries. We took samples on the lake along the industrial stretch that houses Equator bottles, the franchised bottlers of Coca-Cola in Kisumu, to the Kenya Pipeline Company next to the ruins of the once vibrant Kisumu Beach Resort. You see, if you look at this, this is what we are saying that we have the, the green brew algae, right? Uh, the blue green algae is, 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 is toxic. It's uh, cyanobacteria. We pick the water and test That's it at that level. But we'll move a little bit deeper and uh, pick the sediments. Now, sediments will help us to look at the over a, a, a longer time uh, because it will accumulate. Uh, these chemicals will accumulate uh, in the sediments. So when we take sediments, we're able to pick a, a, a better picture of what has been happening over time. We are also picking uh, aquatic animals. And in fish, uh, the most important thing we test are, are the chemicals, because fish are known to accumulate chemicals. And, and when we say this, we are thinking of things like uh, mercury. Uh, things like cadenium, uh, things like uh, chromium. Uh, they, they are heavy metals and uh, they may not be there. And a fish will not die when they consume that. And then now when humans feed on that, then that's where the problem comes in. Well, a whole lot of problems is what River Kisat brings into the lake. Indeed, the river is troubled from source, a swamp east of Kisumu that has now been cleared to make way for maize and sorghum fields to the mouth where it drains its grime into the lake. As it courses along through the Obunga slums, River Kisat drags along a concussion of filth the slum lacks sanitation facilities. Here, the river mingles with the sewage from the settlements, and the end result is grimy and lethal. If, if, you, if you don't have uh, the, the basic requirements uh, in the uh, excreta uh, containment, and it is allowed to be discharged into the water bodies outside their house, at the end of the day, that is carried uh, uh, to a bigger stream somewhere and to a bigger river that adds up into the lake where we are getting our food from. Further downstream, the river meets another slimy flow, an evil looking black from the city's water treatment plant, run by the Kisumu Water and Sewerage Company, Kiwasko. There's been few improvements on the now 8,000 cubic meter capacity plant since the colonial days. Built in the 1950s, the Kisumu water treatment plant serves most of Kisumu, taking in its field, cleansing it, and releasing what it considers to be an untarnished stream back to the environment. I'm uh, very satisfied uh, and uh, confident that what we release back to the lake uh, meets uh, the regulatory uh, standards. Uh, you see we have a very uh, modern lab uh, up there where whatever, whatever comes in, whatever goes out uh, is taken to the lab and we look at all the parameters and I'll tell you that 99% of the times we normally uh, meet the, eff, uh, the effluent standards that is released back uh, to the lake. Our effluent actually dilutes the polluted river, so it makes it better. From the look of it, 
of course the water is colored. Of course the brown is because of silting. Because of the rains, there's a lot of uh, erosion that takes place. The brackish is of course the, the, from the treatment plant. And then of course you know they're treating as uh, sewage. We could pick the color, we could pick the smell. That's a level of contamination. And that is both from uh, the, uh, the company treatment uh, discharge site and also another site uh, in above the golf uh, club. I think there is a discharge for our factories uh, at that point, of course. We, and we could see the silting, the black silting. That would highly suggest chemical contamination. The poisonous discharge from the plant calls into question its capacity to treat the city's filth or even the water it abstracts from the same foul lake to a level safe enough for domestic consumption. I mean, these are the things that annoy me, you know, because Kiwasco is our company. And sitting on the board of Kiwasco, Kiwasco is uh, the Minister for Finance, the Minister for Water and the Environment, and the city manager. And, um, but I guess that uh, these individuals are so overwhelmed with so much work and uh, we, we actually need somebody who is not just a minister, we need people who uh, know something scientifically about the environment. But Kiwasko says it's not the only one to blame for the toxic flow into the environment. So it is at this plant where we receive both uh, the domestic waste and industrial waste. Uh, as you know, industrial waste, we expect that it is pre-treated so that it meets certain standards, uh, uh, NEMA standards, before it's brought for us for further treatment. All the influence that comes, we actually take to the lab to measure those parameters, whether they meet the standards uh, uh, or not. And if they don't meet, we quickly talk to the industries to take corrective action. Uh, and of course, when you do that, we also liaise with uh, uh, the regulatory bodies. We liaise with NEMA, we liaise with the Water Resources Authority uh, as well. Secondary sedimentation, then this is our discharge. According to their analysis of the waste from industries for the period between the 17th of October 2018 and the 21st of October 2019, the waste from four industries ran afoul of NEMA's guidelines on discharge into public sewers, having failed some aspects of their physiochemical tests. This, they say, tested their capacity to effectively treat the waste. Whatever has come in, uh, in, most of the times we are able to treat it, huh? uh, but it stresses our system. So we normally do um, uh, frequent tests just to ensure that uh, we get uh, uh, the quality of what comes in uh, right. And if it is not right, then we ask the industries to take corrective action. If they don't, then we block uh, their sewer system. Equator Bottlers, the franchised bottlers of Coca-Cola in Kisumu, was one of those flagged. The company, however, says its waste treatment protocols are beyond reproach. In a statement, Coca-Cola says the effluent is taken through various rigorous stages before discharge. The effluent is also tested regularly in their own labs and in other accredited labs externally to ensure it complies with both local and international standards. The bottler says they recently had discussions with Kiwasco, where they agreed on common sampling protocols on the effluent so as to come up with a consistent point of reference as well as take corrective actions when necessary. According to a report by the National Environment Management Authority for the month of December, a team of inspectors from the regulator, the Water Resources Authority, the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute and Kiwasco investigated allegations that the company was discharging effluent directly to the lake. The team concluded that the two pipes connected to the lake were only used to abstract water from the lake, one an old line and another currently in use. The team ordered the firm to decommission the old line to dispel any pollution concerns. Doctor, what do you think about this? Kiwasco also flagged the waste from the Kenya Breweries Limited. 
but the brewer discounts Kiwasco's assertions. KBL says none of what they submit to the city's treatment plant has been flagged since 2018. The brewer further says the Kisumu plant treats all its waste and ensures it meets the requirements for discharge into the sewer line, analyzing the effluent four times a day in their own lab and takes corrective measures if the results vary from the accepted standards. Also of concern was the waste from the East Africa Seafood Limited, a company that processes null perch from the lake for export and imports tilapia and other fish from China, and kibos sugar. For kibos sugar in allied industries, their vision to be the home of simple sweetness and the reality seem to flow in different directions. Relations between the company and locals have simply soured over the future of River Kibos. Yet another stream that snakes past the industry on its way to the Lake Victoria. The river is a pool of dead water, emptiness and toxins, and locals say the industry is responsible. Watu wanasikia harufu mbaya sana. Uchafu, ani vitu zene zinakuwa kama gris gris hivi, vitu mbaya mbaya, ma chemicals. Kwanza za hizi ya tukunyu hata imaji. Tumbo ili niuma sana. Nikaenda osi waka nipata na typhoid. Saye ni wana mwaga hizo maji, atu ingi hata hapo kwa maji. Samaki pia kuna chemical ingine, enye hii nini inatoa, hii sugar inatoa. Waki mwaga maji. Samaki jenye yuko hapo na kufa wa yote. Kama mvua imeanza, ndio wanaanzia hiyo kumwaga maji. If going to the river we must go undercover. This I took before going to court. This is the river. This is the factory. At the outset, Benson Ambuti Adega cuts the image of a firebrand revolutionary. He is leading the crusade to save Kibos River from the alleged pollution by Kibos Sugar Company. Mm. Are we going there? Mm. At times, he claims, at great risk to his own life. You can't use that water. <laughs> that water is area. We use to take that water directly from the river. We do grazing with the same water. Right now we can't use it. We depend on the pipe water which sometimes it bursts. You can't access it. That is our life. He and two others filed a civil suit at the Environment and Land Court in Kisumu against the Kibos Industries for failing to comply with NEMA regulations on effluent discharge and against the National Environment Management Authority and the county government of Kisumu for failing to stop the company's operations. They don't represent the community. We had been crying no one to come out. So I decided as a man with a single hand, I talked to my legal team. I talked to them, they do, are doing for me pro bono, pro bono petition. This is a matter of life and death. If we can't protect our environment, we don't have future generation. And this is the where the cancer is coming from. I think our people are seeing this thing, cancer is all over. People are dying because of cancer. The cause is this pollution. We are not against any investor in our community. We are happy with the investment, but they have to follow the right procedure. Kibos Sugar maintains its operating procedures are stainless. Kibos is very careful when it comes to environmental management. Whatever waste we produce from one industry enters into the other industry as a, a raw material to add value. NEMA has given us 95 to 100 percent compliance. That is why we are still in operation. If we, indeed we were polluting, NEMA would not allow us to operate. Once or twice we have had an accident which we reported to NEMA. 
we have a compliance plan which we are working together with NEMA to ensure that nothing goes out, nothing that is going to be of a negative impact to the environment. That is the final product. Open the pop. In July of last year, the Environment Court handed the community what they saw as a sweet victory. The court ordered the company's closure. It also found that the sugar miller and two of its subsidiaries had obtained their licenses illegally. But Kibos moved to the Court of Appeal. A ruling by a three-judge bench that was expected on the 19th of December was deferred after one of the judges Professor Justice James Otieno Odek was found dead in his Kisumu apartment on the 16th of December. The Court of Appeal on the 31st of January dismissed the decision of the High Court, saying there was no evidence that the firm was polluting the environment or that the residents had suffered any damages as a result of the pollution. I'll work, I'll deal with this thing to the end. Whether it will take my life, but I will save the life of our future generation. And I'll fight this war to the highest court in the land. So long as the uh, constitution is protecting me, I'm happy. We welcome anybody who wants to see what we are doing. We welcome you to take samples, never take samples themselves. We took samples of the effluent from the factory to find out for ourselves what is veiled in the troubled waters. The results were unsettling. But it's not just in Kajulu location where something pungent has been festering. Residents of Otonglo in Kisumu say the prison in their community has shackled them to years of torment. It's a confine they can't seem to break out of. The lines on Rasko Olilo's face are perhaps an impression of the very fine line between the hope and despair that the community now walks. Rasko Olilo remembers when the waters of the Saka stream winding past their homes was crystal. Now it's been sullied by a revolting discharge from the Kodiaga prison. <laughs> The prison sewer system is a crumbling colonial ruin set up in the 1950s. It was meant to serve the inmates, the prison staff and their families. Today, the sewer system is bursting at the seams, overburdened by the addition of the Kisumu Medium Security Prison and the Kisumu Women's Prison. In July of 2017, at least 34 inmates at the facility contracted cholera. In 2009, 30 inmates at the prison died of cholera. A prison being an inherently detested institution, pollution problems there are largely ignored. And the residents say so have their complaints. Hello. NEMA has also issued a closure notice to Maseno University in the interest of public health. The institution, which failed to comply with an earlier order, does not have a waste water treatment system. Raw sewage from the university still flows openly into the environment. 
A notice to remove all illegal connections into River Kisat was also issued to Autotech Solutions Limited. All this slime that drains into the lake allows the toxic algae and other invasive plants to flourish, cutting off the oxygen supply for all other forms of life. And so this prized asset has been deteriorating and its treasure trove of diversity is nearly gone. But it's not just in Kisumu where the seeds of field have sprouted. Our investigations took us further up the lake's watershed to its life-giving veins that also carry some deadly contents. Boma lot ambalo halina mze, halina mwelekeo. Nini nekula panga karibu nene? Wawaji ni vijana. Ya nduwa ni mshawu. Mtoto wangu nduwa ni nambia hivi. Ila allegation ya uchawu ni ila ya remote control. Haswa zaidi kabisa ni hii kitu mwele nyaupe hii. Wewe ni mchawu kabisa. Wazewe ni ohili wanasema kuwa iwapo serikali haitachukua hatua ya haraka kusitisha visa vya wazee kuvamiwa na kuwawa basi eneo hili la kilifi litasalia bila mzee hata mmoja siku za usoni Grace Today program with Bishop David Muridi the general overseer of the House of Grace Ministries International Maybe you're just about to get into problems or maybe you are in problems or maybe you came out of a problem it is the church of Jesus Christ that helps you to face the problems and the vicissitudes of life so you are not alone. With Lipana M-Pesa, you get more. Lipana M-Pesa. Every 100 shillings spent on Lipana M-Pesa earns you an entry into the draw. Do more with Lipana M-Pesa. Been a sinner, at a margin, Ilion Bonica Semasina. Always wanted to be a singer, but along the way, I think focus in the Bakisina. Nataka knew an hour, so I told me, Let me know any me now, any me now. Cause I am a quality hyena, Makosa. In a cool bit, I don't want a toy, and in a cosa. See a Jojoni Maumi. Kena kapete, 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 kapete Eee, futu Kisha chora namba kwenye telephone Eee, telephone Leo tujuwa The Heat, in association with Coca-Cola This is NTV. There is a different kind of school and teaching taking place in Samburu County. It is an all-woman class and all the students are mothers-to-be. A few kilometers from Maralal town, 
is a silent village whose efforts at ensuring they safeguard the future of their generations continues to ring louder and louder with each passing month. A new curriculum of motherhood has been introduced here and it has been embraced by many. Helen Letingiso, an expectant mother of four, hails from Partuk. She is about to be recruited as a student in the womb classroom, which takes place at a local dispensary about a kilometer from her home. The class has 270 students on a good day, and the numbers are growing. The practical lessons have a design where there is a step-by-step -step curriculum for each stage of a child's life starting from the time they are in the womb a stage that is often ignored. Unlike the traditional classes, this one thrives on practical lessons. There are no examinations, but the results at the end of the course are evident when the child is born. The benefits of the lessons are also lifelong. The content of their classwork varies. It touches on different topics, starting from the first day when a woman realizes they are with child.
Partook Dispensary is the physical address of the warm classroom. Some of the women, like Letingiso, who are visited and taught from their homes by community health volunteers, are required to share their new acquired knowledge with the rest of the class when they are in session. This helps them retain what they were taught and at the same time pass the knowledge to their classmates. They normally have a class every fortnight. If uh, an expectant mother sings uh, or talks or speaks to a baby, a unborn baby, while still in the womb, uh, that it will make a, a big significant and growth of that child while still in the womb. For cognitive stimulation for a child to, to develop, we focus zero to five years, not only just the nine, the nine months. This makes actually a child to be very alert and uh, always very active. Medical personnel and community health volunteers say an unborn child can recognize its parents' voice, which is one of the many reasons as to why mummies and daddies are advised to engage with their babies while they are still in the womb. <laughs> And there is a striking difference between a child who has been engaged with right from the womb and one who wasn't. Women are also taught how to ensure babies latch properly when breastfeeding, as a good latch promotes high milk flow and minimizes nipple discomfort for the mother. While a poor latch results in poor milk transfer to the baby and can quickly lead to sore and cracked nipples. Baby's health, emotional responses, uh, mental growth of a child is actually laid down to nine months. That is between conception and birth. So that is why uh, we introduced the womb classroom to ensure that the children are being taken care of when they are still uh, unborn. We have reached uh, around 270 mothers so far and we are still uh, having a target to, that we, we are going to reach more, more mothers on this. The womb classroom has its share of challenges. Some people, you know, they, they fear, like when, 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 when you tell them that a husband must have to come and uh, touch the stomach of, of a mother because of, the, because of cultural, cultural things. Scientists say 90% of brain development happens before kindergarten. At birth, the average baby's brain is about a quarter of the size of the average adult brain. Incredibly, 
It doubles in size in the first year and it keeps growing to about 80% of adult size by age 3 and 90% nearly full grown by age 5. The first stage of the human brain development which covers 0 to 10 months, neurons and connections are growing. The mother is advised to stimulate the young developing brain with sounds and sensations. The second is from birth to six years old. This is another critical stage. Development of voluntary movement, reasoning, perception, frontal lobes active in development of emotions, attachments, planning, working memory and perception all take place here. A sense of self is developing and life experiences shape the emotional well-being. By age 6, the brain is 95% its adult weight and peak of energy consumption. Caregivers need to provide nurturing environment and daily individualized communication. Negative or harsh treatment may come with emotional consequences in the future. From the womb classroom and eventually the child is born, learning does not stop. It continues to the early childhood development education stage. Parents and guardians are still captains at this stage. At Ledero village, Japan Lesor Dongera is a mother who comfortably makes toys for her children. But this was not the case a few years back. She did not place any importance in making play equipments for her children. She had a change of heart after she was trained and informed on the benefits toys have in the development of her children. Now she is busy making a toy car using locally available materials while her children look on. Apart from sparking creativity in them, it further cements their bond. We guide parents on how to do, like for example, we go to a school, we train the parents on how to make locally uh, toys, play equipment using locally available materials. Mm -hmm. And even in hospitals, in, the, in uh, health facilities, we, we create a, a safe play environment in our hospitals to create it more friendly for children. The benefits of integrated early childhood development in Samburu, initiated by World Vision, can be traced to this place, Maralal DEB Primary School. This is because the womb classroom is the first classroom that determines whether a child will be a high or low performer. It helps prepare them for formal education. The ECDE class here is typical of similar classes in the country. The lessons are very interactive 
and for a child who was engaged right from the time they were in the womb, their grasp of what they are being taught is tremendous. They are also very alert. Play is also given a priority at this stage. Play is the key stimulating thing in child development and brain development happens in the first two years of life. So it depends on the variety of materials that you provide to the child and the environment itself. So you have to provide a lot of colorful play materials so that this brain is well stimulated to enable the development of the brain for it to be ready for learning. As the child gets to four, the brain is ready now to accommodate the education in class. And even in ECDs, play is the key methods of learning. So they learn through play. Either in class we have manipulative materials that they handle. As they move out, they also learn through the outdoor learning materials. In between the breaks, the children also get a chance to play and interact outside their toy room as they bask in the sun. And there are effects exhibited by a child who is not exposed to play. Play tackles all the aspects of child development from emotional, social, cognitive, physical. So when one, a child is not exposed to play, you find that all these aspects of development have not been stimulated well. And this child may not be able to interact well with the other children. And even in the later as they grow, they may not be interact well with the community and the society. At the same time, play also helps in development of physical development of the child, development of the motor skills, fine and gross motor skills, as they handle the materials, the little balls, the bean bags, among other manipulative materials, the fine motor skills develop and the muscles also develop well. Also the eye-hand coordination develops. The handiwork of their parents are still visible in the learning environment. Parental engagement is very, very important to ECD learners. Learning starts from home. So we engage them in material development and some of those materials are left in school for their learning, so they contribute to the school by providing learning materials, the manipulative materials like bean bags, toy cars, charts, so that they can interact well with the environment, society, and develop holistically. Unknown to many, education or the learning process of a child begins in the womb. What the child is or is not to be exposed to at this stage has a direct effect on their development and personality. The womb classroom in Samburu is one that is setting the pace and can be replicated throughout the country. Sharon Baranga, NTV, in the county of Samburu. help women find independence by training them in fish farm. Oh, it's dear. tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches. Panadol That's Extra relieves multiple types of pain. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. It's delicious. The three sides of Anna. It cost me a lot just to keep the secret from her. I can't take it.
would like to call the most epic show because we are taking it back. We're taking it back to the good old days where we didn't have screens and iPads and phones and we just used to go outside and play. And that's what today's show is about. I am Sharon Mundia. I'm going to let my guests introduce themselves. And I am Moji Shot. Bye bye. Shot. Bye bye. And of course, Kama Kaida and Nietzsche means Katiwa. Katiwa and Moji. And we are taking it back. Of uh, when was the last time that you guys played any of the games that we're about? Because they, they know which games we're about to play. <laughs> Things like Wikicho. Yeah. When was the last time? Um, I think for me, uh, when I was about um, 15, 14 years, okay. that's when I played last. Yeah. 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 For you, Moji? I think maybe 10. Aye. That's the last time. Like seriously, like participating. <laughs> but of course, we played every other time with like my small cousins and yeah. everything. But so some other, those, those other games, some of them I've never actually like played perfectly. What? Yeah. Like which game? Like uh, by show. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, that one we were already, we were, we were already debating because I don't remember it as by show. I yeah. remember it by shot. Yeah. By shot? Yeah. By shot, I love you, baby. Now you see the, the difference. To the sun. The difference is what to my baby. My baby only wants to by shot. Then on some time it will come to show. Or maybe yeah. you say by show and I can't remember. You see? It's like Father Abraham. Yeah. You think, pa da 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 da, America so pa da 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 da, America, you know. We just recently found out the lyrics. Ah, Oringo, bye, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oringo, <laughs> bye, yo, yo. What is that? Okay. It's Oringo okay. something. I think it's Oringo, Oringo, Rose. I no. don't know. But it was something like totally different. Like we used to get English and just butcher it. It wasn't that the good old day. Yeah. It was so much fun. I mean, I think kids have fun today. I mm. like, you know, I'm sure they do. Yeah, they do. But. It's not the same. Comparing it like scrolling through Instagram and the pressures that they feel. Yeah. yeah I can't compare it to playing, um, what was that again? The one where you had... Banta? No. Oh. No, we oh, used to have like stones, yeah. Oh, stones. no, not hopscotch. Yeah. Or, or, what was it? Hopscotch and? Kikings. That's what yeah. we used to call oh, it. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so I want us to start playing. Yeah. All right. I'm competitive and I want to win, so I'm ready to jump. And I think... Don't worry, Yata Sisi, last time I played these games, I played shirtless. So I feel a yeah, bit of a... Yeah, high school. No, Mwana, to look up to look up to high school. By then we studied the same Went to the same school, Really? Yes. Oh, you guys are cheating, are you mad? No, on a serious note. Yeah, serious note. Even the producer didn't know, yeah. Same high school. Senior Chief Koinange. Yes, senior. Yeah. Okay, so I want us to start with an easy one, mm -hmm. right. um, which I don't even know if it has a name. There's mm. a name for this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you, oh, so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember this one? We used yeah. to call it Makamba. Makamba. Oh. Mm. Yeah. I can't even remember the name. Yeah. But who wants to go first? All right. I will. Katiwa, 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 Katiwa. Yeah. Okay. You want to take it from Katiwa? Yeah, maybe. Moji? Yeah. I don't even remember how this... Oh, you take it, you take it with your hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you have so to... So, this yeah. is how you start it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Then take one. Yeah. I'm probably going to mess this up. Then this. I can take it from there. Take you it, can. Take it, take so it. I would then take this. Yes. And that. I can't. Yes. Oh, I can't okay, believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe. Then I will take from here. Uh huh. Then this one. I'm just gonna then. be a cheerleader at this point. <coughs> hey, you guys go. Oh. You guys go. Oh. Our fingers are not <laughs> as small as they used to be. Ah, you've just done the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So you have to find another trick. So I think the other one I'll try. Do you know, honest to God, this just feels like. The right thing to do. I'm not sure. I'm uh, mission. Abort mission. Let's start okay. again. <laughs> Let's start again. All right. Okay. I want you to do it. Did you ever do this game? Um, nah. Oh, as, as I said clear. I, I said clear of the complete game. Yeah. 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 Yes, oh God. yes and then I do what? In case I don't leave it. Okay. I'm going to explain it. Yes. Really? I think I'm almost. No, my. No. Yes, yes, do you? No, but I've ruined one. Oh, okay, wait, okay, then let me do it and then you pick it. You All pick right. it. Wow. Buddha. Yeah. This is hard. Yeah. See, this is called what I... Oh, yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait, do you think kids still play this today? I don't think because no. I feel like the culture right now yeah. is more uh, into social media. <gasps> oh my God, Katila, <gasps> we are killing it. Oh, 
my god. Oh, I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. Like this and like this. And yes. then I take this, right? Yes. Do it. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. We tried. We tried. You guys. Anyway, A plus for us for trying. <laughs> you emoji, I'm not even trying. I'm, I'm, I think uh, you're cheering. I'm just Kuruka. I'm just here. Yeah. So tell me, what was the game that you were the best at? That used to be reigning champion. People would be like, "Moji's on my team." Mm. Or Katio is here. Ah, what man. was your What was your game? I'm not as athletic now. In yeah. fact, I'm just joining the gym now and all that. Yeah. I wasn't as athletic then. So, I think the games that really like, really like, guys used to like me doing was like what ended up being my career, which was like rapping. So oh. when we just like nursery rhymes and coming up with random songs and doing all those things, that was my. That oh, was my. You were the cool kid. And, ah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, cool. No, it was no, 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 no. It wasn't because it wasn't because everybody like from the hood. She knows every in the hood. Everybody plays football. So I used to play, yeah. but I wasn't good. By default, if you're from the hood, you have to play soccer. Yeah. That is just it's yeah, like yeah. it's like. Yeah. Mandatory. And it was the one where you take paper bags and then you wrap. Exactly, yes, yes, exactly. exactly. That's how you yeah. start. Mm. And then as you get older, mm. you guys start. Um, you start taking your pocket money and you and you bring it together and yeah. you buy like a proper soccer ball. Yeah. Oh, we and never then, upgraded to that. Well, first of all, can we talk about our hoods? Where did you? What hood was? My my hood is Dagoreti. Okay. Dagoreti, hold Dagoreti, Kaungware, all the way back to Ngando. Yeah. Yeah. And you oh, Ngando. I stayed in Ngando yeah. a couple of months ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine uh, ni Kibra. Kibia. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mine was Karibangi South. Karibangi South. Yeah. Kesa. Yeah. Like. Kesa. Mm. Mm. You don't look nice. But okay, so I would have so, said Karen South mm. by you. <laughs> Where can I throw some Where? Barbie jobs? Okay, so yeah. yours was rapping. You yeah. know why I say it was cool? Because I remember, like, they'd sometimes like kids would sort of sort of go to a corner and be talking about cool music or what's happening, yeah. and I'd always be the one who's just like, I have no idea what's going on. Out of the story. Like I have no idea. Like. <laughs> I just would be struggling to even remember the lyrics. And then remember, remember how they used to have the lyrics in the newspaper? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, that, so I would be the one struggling. <laughs> to get the lyrics. To get the lyrics. Because I'd be like, yeah, you guys. Yeah. You know what I used to do with those lyrics? Yeah. Uh, because I used to have a very good handwriting when I was in high school. Yeah. So people used to come, uh, you know, with their written uh, letters, especially when people were going to Funkies. So I told them, you can't write your handwriting. You can write your song, you can write your songs. You can handwriting. So I used to take those lyrics. And then write them there. So you were making money. Were you being paid? No. Oh. I never asked for some money. Ah, Buddha. I used to do makeup. I used to do makeup for people though. Yeah. Got it. And so what game were you good at before we jump I into that? The one that you used to play, like, uh, if you could make a mow and then you used to draw a box yeah. with eight yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah, boxes. Yeah. Yes, and um, kick, kick, and then throw it. Yes. Yeah. And then, then yeah. Uh, banta. Banta would be... Banta or banta? Banta. We used to say yes. banta. Oh. Banta, yeah, it's... Uh, what do you call them in English now? Marbles. Exactly. But we used to say bano. Yeah. I never understood that. Banto and bano. Okay. So I see another game here, which I'm not even sure Blada. how Blada. we're going to do it. This one, you just jump but, in, and jump also, out. Can I just say a major kudos to my producers and everybody for Because I have no, like, I have no idea where they got this. Yeah. Oh, so like, you cut, you cut need it, actually yeah? To yeah, so we need to cut it. So they even have a Wembe for us, mm. you guys. You wow. gonna do, I'm going to let you do the honors. All right. Mm. Do we have, yeah. But just you have be to hold careful. It. You have to hold oh, it tight. Hold this side. So we don't lose any. Yeah. yeah. And you can't, okay. please, you can't cut this thing because we only have this. Oh my God. I, I can't even tell you guys how this is making me go back. Like memory mm. lane. Kabisa, it's, such a, no. it's such a coincidence that Miss Katiwa is the one cut time. Cut time! I see how you are! I see! I see! I see. Oh, careful, careful okay. here. Yeah. I see how you are the, wow. the wordsmith. Katiwa, and a katai kitu. Wow. So what songs used to be your uh, favorites growing up? Or what? Or, or which artists rather? Maybe it's... Which artists? Artist. Yeah. So I grew up in a very staunch Christian home. Uh -huh. So music was... First of all, I don't, I don't think I was exposed to music really early on. Yeah. Uh, apart from praise and worship. Uh -huh. Shout out to my show show. <laughs> uh, but I think we got, we got a... My, my hookah got a, got a stereo. Yeah. And then now I started listening to music. So... But the the songs the songs that I think the first song I can remember songs like I that stuck to my head uh, Rafton mm. uh, yeah because yeah, now yeah because I was limited to gospel yeah. and then there was this Kikuyu song 
Which one? You have to sing. Na mogere kanyo, ni wari desiora, na koko genyo, ni moon. Oh my god. Wana ni buroka. Na woka buroka. Wana ni kausi. Na woka. I think it was man mosaimo. That was, that was I think the first song I ever interacted with and I was like, ay 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 ay, this guy is so dope. Oh, wow. <laughs> he don't even know the guy. I like this, song. <laughs> but he's a very he's a very big Kikui artist. And then after that then the Raftones and then yeah. Kiss 100 now. Mm. Uh, Kiss 100 now, you know, started listening to that and then you know the songs that used to play there, um, you know, top stuff 10. like that, yeah. Well, is that the one that used to have top 10 every night? Yes. Seven, 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 top at seven, seven at seven. Yes. That's then another Lisa, thing. Mona yes. Lisa, all those songs now. That was oh that my was my God. introduction to like music now yeah. and, and stuff, yeah. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. And we are done. So do we cut that one also and then tie it? Yes. yes. We cut at the very end. Yes. Yeah. You guys, I don't think this bladder is long enough. Uh, We're going to work with it. We're just going to have to cut it out. Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. So you tie that side mm -hmm. and I tie this side. And God, and who's going, obviously cut you while you're going first. <sighs> good luck. All, all right. All this. Jesus. <laughs> I used to be so bad at this game because my legs are so short. No. So when it comes to here, mm -hmm. oh, first of all, do you even remember they used to do three fingers like this? I don't know, there was one oh, where you could yes, do four yes, fingers. Yes. Now, that was like the third stage after you won the yeah. first and the second Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's start. Oh, this is long enough. Yeah, we're good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even introduce Pendo. <laughs> Who's the dog that Penzo. you see? Pendo. Transia. Oh, Buddha. Buddha. Hey. No, Magoti. Like yeah. Magoti. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Not too tight. Not too tight. I feel like it'll break. <laughs> That's really good. Oh. Wow, so you? Nikki Band? Yeah. No, Someone else. Right. Okay. Okay. I can't believe you. Okay. Hey. <laughs> almost. Almost. He's got you a don't be banner. There's no cash prize. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, <laughs> next time. No, it's okay. Is it waist or just below waist? Just below it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so did you play this one? Nah. Okay. Uh, but as much as it. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you're next. <gasps> hey! Oh, and on that note, I think we have to take a break. As we fix this, fix this we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll play a few more games. And also, if you would like to see us play specific games, please check us, uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's Living With Us. Hit us up and let us know what games you want us to try on our next show. And maybe we'll bring you guys back and it will be on. Okay, break time. We'll be back in a moment. Once again, it's time to run at the Beyond Zero Half Marathon 2020. Come and run with us. I will run for a healthy lifestyle for the elderly. I will run for access to better health care. Register now at beyondzero.or.ke All Nairobi Sports House branches countrywide. Athletics Kenya Riyadh House or any of the registration centers countrywide. Beyond Zero Half Marathon 2020. I will run. Kuna mtu ambaye anaenda Italy. Unaenda nana? Angalia kwa kio. But unajua vizuri sana mimi na tuliko tume plan vacation. Together tunaenda Italy. Now you know how it feels to be jealous. So naweza kuona. Unataka mimi nikuje kwako? Mm, kuja. Ever since Brayo alanduku umekuwa desperate. Kila saa mara mko date mara mnafanya nini? Unataka kurudi kamiti nini? Najua kamiti ni home. Kama umerudia wizi utabidi basi umeachana sera. Okay, the present. Imeandikwa PB PB na maanisha nini? Boma lote ambalo halina mzee, halina mwelekeo. Mimi nilikula panga karibu nne. Wawaji ni vijana. Niliandua nimshau. Mtoto wangu ndio aliniambia hivi. Ile allegation ya uchao ni ile ya remote control. 
hasa zaidi kabisa ni hii kitu nywele nyeupe hii wewe ni mchawi kabisa wazee wenye hili wanasema kuwa iwapo serikali haitachukua hatua ya haraka kusitisha visa vya wazee kuvamiwa na kuwawa basi eneo hili la kilifi litasalia bila mzee hata mmoja siku za usoni Grace Today program with Bishop David Muridi, the General Overseer of the House of Grace Ministries International. Maybe you're just about to get into problems. Or maybe you're in problems. Or maybe you came out of a problem. It is the Church of Jesus Christ that helps you to face the problems and the vicissitudes of life. So you are not alone. With Lipa na M-Pesa, you get more. Lipa na M-Pesa. Every 100 shillings spent on Lipa na M-Pesa earns you an entry into the draw. Do more with Lipa na M-Pesa. Been a sinner, at a margin, Iliombo, Nikasema Sina. Always wanted to be a singer, but along the way, I think focus, Ilibaki Sina. in association with Coca-Cola. TV. The essence of any continuous professional training is to inform and to keep participants updated on developments in the profession. This is mandatory, not just for judges, but all legal professionals who support the judges in their function. And number two, in the establishment of specialist arbitration courts. Creating specialist court divisions, however, has resource implications for states generally. And for most African states, with very weak economies, and several other issues such as security, competing for scarce national resources, specialist cost divisions for arbitration matters may not just be affordable or may not be at the top of the agenda for the various governments. In addition, doing a cost-benefit analysis, it may be difficult to justify sinking such resources in the creation of specialist arbitration courts when taking into account other competing demands which will impact immediately and directly on the well-being of the most of the local population. Another suggestion that has been mooted at various conferences is giving the courts of appeal or regional jurisdiction over arbitration matters as is in the case in some African jurisdictions. The difficulty with this suggestion is that in most African jurisdictions, this will require constitutional amendments, which as we all know, is a real feat. As it relates to the enforcement or challenge of international or foreign arbitral awards, original competence in the Court of Appeal may assist with the quality of the decisions made. 
It will also impact on the time spent pursuing such redress, since there will be only one more level of appeal to the Supreme Court. However, as it relates to domestic arbitration, it may be preferable for these to commence at the court of first instance to give the judges in that circuit the opportunity to familiarize themselves with arbitration-related applications. And this is important because generally, it is the judges from the first instance courts that are sent to the Court of Appeal and to the Supreme Court. And therefore, <clears throat> they would bring with them their experience and learning from the Court of First Instance. Another suggestion is the publication of court decisions. It is very difficult to find court decisions on arbitration. Some states are better than others in this matter. For instance, the Chief Justice suggests South Africa and Kenya, because these are available online. However, arbitration-related judgments can be made more easily available by the courts themselves, some of which have their own websites. Arbitration institutions in the, these states can also support this task by providing on their websites summaries of any arbitration-related decisions from the courts along with a copy or a web link to the text of such judgments. The various young arbitrator groups in the continent can also support this task through publishing case commentaries. This will greatly assist with making such decisions publicly available and open for critique and discussion by commentators in addition to being referred by other judiciaries and being uploaded into the New York Convention databases. Decisions from the English and other courts, for example, are well known internationally because they are easily and generally freely available online and commentaries are written on them making them better known and often cited. In this way, the thinking of the English and other judges generally influence the development of international commercial and arbitration law. African judges can also contribute to this development of the law. Finally, the knowledge that their judgment and reasoning will be freely available to the general public, domestic and international, will also encourage African judges to write more rigorously well-argued, well-reasoned judgments and will definitely contribute to the international arbitration jurisprudence. There is no gain saying the fact that these African voices are needed in the development of international arbitral jurisprudence. The conclusion, arbitration of commercial disputes in Africa is growing, and this growth will continue. African states are beginning to accept this fact, which is driven by commercial parties and arbitration lawyers in Africa, and that judges now also accept this direction of travel and recognize that arbitration needs their full support in order to thrive. Importantly, most of the articulated weaknesses of courts in Africa have roots in the colonial-based legal systems operating in these jurisdictions. And these systems are no longer fit for purpose and desperately need modernization. It also suggests that each African jurisdiction will need to examine the weaknesses of its courts or legal system and in the context of its particular reality, determine what changes its economy can support and can implement. This will be different for each state and may result in incremental development in arbitration support. There indeed is evident progress in support that African judges give to, to both the domestic and international arbitration, 
and there is need to sustain this progress through continued training of judges, court registrars, legal practitioners, and increased awareness activities, not just, not just within the legal community of judges, lawyers, students, academics, and trainers, but also of the commercial parties. Ultimately, an arbitration-friendly jurisdiction is one whose courts do not encourage interference in arbitral proceedings or in arbitral awards by recognizing the finality of the decision made by the arbitrators. It is incumbent upon us as the jurisdiction, sorry, it's incumbent upon us as judiciaries in Africa to support arbitration. Ladies and gentlemen, with those few remarks of the Honorable, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, it is now my humble duty, honor, and privilege to declare this meeting, this conference, officially open. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Judge. I think uh, we have gotten uh, that very insightful message from the, from the Chief Justice. And, uh, well, as a sign of appreciation for um, your speech, we have a small token here from, uh, from uh, the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. Um, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> is, is that for me or for the CJ? No, the, the CJ is not here, so <laughs> probably we can take it. Now, um, I think moving on, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Jimmy Moyanja, I don't know whether he's around, to um, introduce the next speaker. I must begin by gifting you for the job well done. <laughs> First and foremost, could you please? Thank you. I wish I had a tie like you. <laughs> no, job well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. The next opening address is from the Office of the Solicitor General, and this will be on Africa's role in the reform of the ISDS system. Um, this. Next opening address will be delivered by Pauline Mucharo, who is the head legal advisory and research division at the Attorney General's office. She is also a board member of the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration. You will also be interested to note that Pauline Mucharo has performed the distinguished role of defense counsel for the Republic of Kenya in five international arbitration cases. So please join me in welcoming Pauline Mucharo to the podium. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Welcome to Mombasa, and I hope you're enjoying our beautiful beaches and the sun, and I wish you a good stay. I am here today on behalf of the Solicitor General of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Kennedy Ogeto, who was unable to attend today's occasion because of other duties of state that required his personal attention. May I express his profound gratitude for your invitation to him to share his thoughts 
on Africa's role on the reform of the investor state dispute settlement system. I will start off with a brief, a brief historical background. In 1959, Germany and Pakistan signed a trade agreement, or rather an investment agreement, to encourage and protect investments between the two countries. The agreement included the first ever investor state dispute settlement mechanism provision. Since then, thousands of agreements containing a similar provision have been concluded around the world. A defining feature of these international investment agreements is a relationship between capital exporting countries and capital importing countries, mainly the developing countries. The main motivation for the international investment agreements was to incentivize investors in capital exporting countries on the guarantee of the investments from state action in the host countries. But all has not been well with the system over the years, as the system has been designed to favor the developed capital exporting countries. The ISDS foundations have led to a system in which the investor's property and contractual rights superseded public interest and public needs. Though I must add, Kenya has faced investment dis states disputes as well, but has been fortunate to prevail in the defenses of the cases, starting from the World Duty Free Exit case to the most concluded Quartec Exit case and Kinangop Wind Park ICC case. However, most countries in Latin America Eastern Europe and Africa have not been so lucky. The ISDS system has threatened to bankrupt the economies. We have seen recent awards in cases against Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and Tanzania of significant economic value which would have negative impact on their economies. The debate on legitimacy of the system has gained momentum over the last two decades. It is no longer a matter of perception, but rather an admitted reality that the, investment, the investor state dispute settlement system has several problems, serious systemic, and systemic enough to merit reform at the multilateral level. Altad has documented the rise in ISDS cases in the past 10 to 15 years, with the overall number of non-treaty-based arbitrations reaching 983 cases as at 31st July 2019. Since most arbitration forums do not maintain a public registry of claims, the total number of cases is likely to be higher. Whereas the investor state dispute settlements mechanism was created to a vision of development that prioritized economic growth through the free market, individual property, and free flow of capital, and narrow the role of the state to purely securing property rights, the system has created an imbalance where capital importing states have been, more, have been affected the most, leading to genuine concerns about the systemic deficiencies in the regime. I will mention a few reasons that have contributed to the crisis of legitimacy of the investor state dispute settlement. First, Foreign investors have used ISDS to challenge measures adopted by states in the public interest and to challenge the state's right to regulate. For example, policies to promote This is NTV. The three sides of Anna. It cost me a lot just to keep the secret from her. I can't take it anymore. We both know that Anna Leticia loves to draw attention to herself. And she did that thanks to all your help, hmm? <laughs> no! No! For heaven's sake, Soledad! Soledad, please wake up! The three sides of Anna. Sour, sour, your tennis sour, 
shower has never been better with the new look Sawa. Now with a new formulation too that will leave you feeling fresh for longer while the soap lasts even longer. The blind man told police officers, Afade, me Mr. Jawai yona bangi maisha yangu yona. Hizo ma award. Zikafanya watu wanze kuimbia award. Badala wa imbe the word. Mimi mwiki nichagua mutaona miujiza. Anajifanya squeezy. Kach! Kibia mana mocha. Na wakopa mwenyezi mungu. Na ujimoto pekeatu. Iyo si bangi. Welcome back, everybody. We are in a very beautiful spot oh. in Karen. It's just like shaded, nice sun is out, but it's not too hot. And today is all about throwing it back with games specifically. And I've got two of the perfect people. Although now that I think about it, I think there's some collusion here. <laughs> uh, but we've got Moji and Katiwa, who went to the same high school. So you see what I mean when they're like, ah, this chick, let's just show her. Um, <laughs> And now, now we want to do blada, mm -hmm. but yeah. with Moji in the middle. So yeah, this is gonna be this. this is gonna be very short, guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're short, bro. It's gonna be very short. I don't even know okay. what Katiwa is doing over okay. here. Uh huh. So how do I do? Like the first time, Unaru Kandani. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then. Unaweka apart. Then apart. Yes, uh -huh. and then and uh -huh. then out. Uh, yes. Then, there. there. Yeah. You guys, <laughs> you're right, Blada. It used to have. Oh, this one is about yeah. to break. I'll even hold it. Actually, there. There, there used to be a trick. <laughs> you can't be able to jump in when the rope is too high. Yeah, yeah. yeah there used to be a trick. So you used to put like no. One, oh yeah, one down. One down. On and hold on, on with your on knee. knee. Yes. Oh my God. Finish. <laughs> ah, that is a wrap. <laughs> That is a wrap, sir. <laughs> Guys, you need to show your missing so Kuruka was saying Kuruka story. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I don't oh jump into conclusions. Oh. So were you the funny guy in school? Were yeah, you the guy who always made people laugh? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. I was. I was. I was. I, was, I, I think she knows but that. But we were sumbua. But I was really shy, but they're funny now. But I was in a girl's school and I, I think I never... Why did you say girl's school? It was, I was in a, it was a mixed school, school yeah. Oh, okay. But it, by the time, let me say why, it, it was a girl's school, yeah? Yeah. So the school was a mixed, mixed school. Uh -huh. So joined it in 2006. Uh -huh. When we joined like this, we were the, they announced that we were the last form ones. Mm. <laughs> Understand? So we just every time we move up a, we move up a class, yeah. there's no class behind us. Oh, wow. Yeah. So by the time we're in form four, we like 200 boys mm. and then there are 800 girls. Yeah. So they were like the so last boys. Been, was that nice or Can no? Can you imagine I never had a girlfriend? Ah. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so cute. <laughs> I want to I was so back. shy. I was, just, I was just the funny guy that girls overlook. look. You know that guy in the movies? Yeah. <laughs> but now they're just like, I just want a funny guy. Oh I just want a guy who makes me laugh. Yeah. And he used okay. to perform for Here us. Chicks were like, oh my god, mm -hmm. aki ule boy, mi neza takatu kwa na yeye. Oh, really? Yeah. But they used to feel, oh. walikuwa na jisikia kwa sababu, yeah. haundu walikuwa mabuizo wa muisho. Yeah. Yeah, so uh. Rea commodity, rea commodity. Mm. Yeah. So I remember jumping in a little different, like mm -hmm. I could do, yes. like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you see the difference here, mababs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the real hassle. Mm. But I think it's easier, what I'm doing is easier. Yeah. It kind of cheats. Oh gosh. Ish. Ah, I, I even want to remove my shoes now. Oh. Now, do you remember that one we used to do like this? Oh, oh in a yeah, that's the <laughs> No, please don't make it harder for me. There's no way I can make I'll that. Do We're gonna go high, Kidogos. No. High. Oh, you, want right. to, you want to? You want You wanted to give me the hard one? Yeah. No, thank you, Mary. I, okay, yes. You see how this is Do just it. discriminatory yeah, against but short But you can people. try the, the trick with the knee? No, let me try jump in. Okay. <laughs> let me okay. not try jump in. I think <laughs> I'm banned. Done. We're going to give you one more chance. One more chance. Yes. yes. The gracious people. Wow. <laughs> Go. Okay. Oh, oh see. God. <laughs> okay. Hey! Oh, hey! Oh. Hey! And then I have to bring this in? Yes. You have to. Oh. Hey. Oh. Yeah. I even lost an earring. But you did it. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, Buda wewe umetoboa wewe ah. make it. <laughs> Can I just say it? Wewe kuna waba. You want to make a speech at this point? Thank you. This is about to all the babies. Are you one of you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so let's do another one that doesn't isn't as physically exhausting. Okay. Mm-hmm. By short. Sure. <laughs> by show. By show. I by think short. I'm just a failure in this show. Ah, Abuda, what am I doing? Is he doing all the way to me? I hope. See, because he's a police and robber. You know, that was a oh, big thing yes. for him. And yeah. shake. Yeah. Did you guys play shake? Uh, Explain it. Oh. Maybe we know it by another it's name. It's harder. I think it's like there were these big boxes uh-huh. and you had to go to from one end to the end. Uh-huh. And you... The, okay. You might not that will be for the next one. You guys, if you guys know Shake, please just comment. Living with us. Let us yeah. know if you remember Shake. Yeah. I'm going to get rid of my earrings because uh-huh. they're just in the way now. They're just in the way. Okay. By shot. By, by shot. shot. Start with that. Okay. Start, start. So as we used to start like this. Bye. 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 Show I love you, baby. The baby to the son, isn't it? The son to the owner, uh, uh. the owner to the man, the man to the bush, baby. Silly one, one, two, three, and four. Silly one, one, two, three, and four. Tata bona. Ah, you see, that, I, I used to do this, bro. Uh. <laughs> okay, so, well, so it's, okay. The, from the start again? All right. Okay. Ba, 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 I show I love you, baby. The baby to, to the, the son, the son to the owner. Then on after the man, the man to the bush, baby. Say one, two, three, and four. Say one, two, three, and four. Didn't you say this one? You said we're doing this one. Ah. Okay, so we start this way. Bye. Bye. Shot. I love you, baby. The baby to the sun. The sun to the moon. The on after the man. The man to the bush, baby. Say one, two, three, and four. Say one. Two, three, and four, ta-ta-bona. Okay. Ah, okay. Three, seven, one, two, three, ta-ta-bona. Seven, one, two, seven, one, two, ta-ta-bona. Seven, one, seven, one, by shot. Ah, we did it. We did it. Is there, wait, is there a song that has this? That has, in, yeah, what I think song? it's a hip-hop song. I, I feel though. like hip-hop? someone, Dick, wow, someone did a song that had, um, ah, what song? Maybe it wasn't by shot. Is Kagwe, Kagwe, maybe Kagwe. Yeah, what did it? It has by show. It had by show. Or it yeah, had. It, did it have? Or is it Scamares? Ska- ah, yes, Scamares. What is that? What is that? Interception. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let you guys and your collusion continue on this show. <laughs> but I used to do. I don't know if. Wait, what was Scamares? Scamares. It's yeah. Matrix. Matrix. Oh yes, and then and then you'd come into the circle. Okay. Wana dunda 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 Okay. But we used to do like the version of, of boys. I don't know oh. if you know it of 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 whatever of um. Oh, it used yeah. to be like. Ta, 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 ta. Like in what? Um, like that. Yeah, that's what we used to do. <laughs> I that's like the that boys memo. version of. That's like I the boys want version. to know. I want to learn that. I've never learned right. that. Right. Boom. Left. Boom. Left. Boom. Right. Yeah, like that, and then you, da, and then back, da, da, yeah. you oh. get it. so it's pa, pa, yeah, yeah, exactly, so let's start, let's go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you get it, you going faster, 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 and faster, and faster, I, only for boys? Uh, no, not only no, for boys, but boys used to do it more than we, the girls, I yeah. I feel like, okay, South played me, because we didn't get that one, no, wait, one more time, one more time, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. You don't even know the name. Yeah. Just, someone just used to walk up to you and just be like, yo, and then let's go. And then, do you guys. That feels so cool. <laughs> That's how I'm going to enter this show from now on. Living with Beth is going to start with like, hey! <laughs> 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 That's the intro! <laughs> That's it. If you're not doing that with me, sorry, no, thank you. That was enough cardio. Like, do, that hey, for, that was enough. do that for like five yeah, minutes. Yeah, it is enough cardio. Running, no yeah. wonder, and that's the thing. Yeah. And I think part of it is security, maybe, or everyone is in their apartments. But mm. there's not, there's no sense of community. Like I remember when there was like adventure and no. you know, kind of going on your bikes, or you could borrow yeah. bikes and sort of go to. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, it, and it felt like it was more of a. It was more of a. And then the thing was, it was. Because guys were not exposed, they used to come. Like I remember, yeah. 
like our version of like say bowling yeah. was you know the batteries for torch for the, the torch yeah yeah so spoiled batteries yeah? yeah so you have like 12 batteries and yeah. i have 12 batteries yeah and then we like we're like maybe like maybe like what 100 meters apart yeah. wow. or, or even and the stone. yeah and then now you have a stone and then what you're trying to do is hit all the batteries before he hits all the batteries. Yeah. It's the new version of <laughs> Unona Swat Kenda bowling. Yeah, it's like bowling. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. bowling. Now yeah, we yeah. used yeah. To, to use the batteries. The yeah. batteries, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, like, that is purely just, yeah. you know, like thinking, something like that. Yeah, just yeah, you making cars yourself. out of like wires yeah. and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so, and then rolling. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, that oh. would make you even, like, even your mind yeah. really, like, really, like, open up. But so on Ajua, the thing is, we never used to have TVs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To, to and tabs, even if we did, and you phone. just did not have cartoon. There yeah. was nothing. Yeah. No cartoon yeah. was like 7 a.m. <laughs> to 8 on a Saturday. Yeah. And then it's like, get out. Do yeah. Yeah. Thing. And what I like about that, too, is that we relied on, our, on, on ourselves to figure this out. Yeah opposed to now where I think parents can kind of lean to oh let me take you to a class yeah, yeah. Let's go to that bo you yeah. know like jumping ballet class Academy. which is good yeah, or yeah mm. but we don't kind of let the children let the kids be yeah. the kids out of their wardrobe mm. yeah. figure out solutions exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot has changed <laughs> a lot has changed yeah so there's one more game okay yes. which truthfully I don't know what I, I don't know what the game is because but <gasps> I never used to play it that much yeah okay. but it it's like throw a stone yeah, and, and pick so yeah. you'll guide. All right. You'll guide. What guide, is that yeah. game called? Uh, Maui. Mama. <laughs> The game used to be, you know, we figure out how to Mama. play the yeah. games. Yeah. But you know, like uh, that meeting, that good meeting of deciding, yeah. you know, <laughs> guys will just walk out. <laughs> like, oh, okay, There's, there are stones, Maui. Yeah. There are batteries, batteries. Yeah. There's this, there's that. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, gosh. Maui, sorry. You can't confuse things here. We're out today. Come join. Oh, Pendo. Yeah, yeah, and of Maui, well, sorry. And of course, we would have dogs, eh? Hey. Yeah. This, this is like, we had dogs in our kitchen. These dogs in our kitchen were Pendo. Yeah. Yeah. Our dogs are just Tasca, <laughs> Bosco, Rex, 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 we had a dog called Rex, Champion, wow, 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 wow. Scooby, Scooby, yeah. that was that, and, yeah. and, yeah. Laugh. and like, now people are cool. Every hood has yeah. had a Tasca and yeah. a Champion and all that. Okay, so here are our stones, Yes. and Pendo better not come <laughs> distract us, and I'm going to let Katiwa lead this game. Alright, so you used to choose one stone. Uh, so it will depend on how many stones you want me to get uh, to get off. But don't you start with one and then pick two? Okay. Or how do you? Okay. Wait. Okay. Oh, you have to pick one. Yeah. You're trying it's to pick one. one. Yeah. Oh, you're just moving. Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't pick it up. Uh -uh. You don't. So the wait, wait, wait. So the idea is to what? Like the I idea, tell you the number. Yeah, you tell me so the I tell number. you four. You tell me four. Okay. I have to choose four. Uh, from here, yeah. So, if I don't, yeah. then I burnt. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, ah. I'll choose a different one that can hold. Yeah. Oh, so that's so you're trying to get one out. So now you have yeah. to move one. Oh gosh, that's mm. complicated. It is complicated. So there are guys who used to do it without even like looking. What? Okay. Yeah. Like this this was like our look. gymnastics. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you did it. So does it matter how long it, it takes you to do it? No, it should be once. One. Yeah. If I burnt, I give the next one. Aye. Yeah. Okay. Give me a give me a number then. Give us one. One. <laughs> you start low. Low expectations. I like you guys now. Okay. Wait. Let me even just practice. Don't hit your glass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think in like my computer is like back. Okay, just can I spread them out? Yeah, you can. Okay, good. Because you were really, you were like even piling them up. I was just like, why are you making it so hard for yourself? All right. So just one. Okay. One. Like that. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh! Okay. And then I return it? Yes. Now pick three. Is that three? Does yeah, that count as yeah. three? Mm. Ah! So that right. would be me, I'm out. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's the last. Come on. <laughs> How many guys? <laughs> we would have start with... down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too aggressive. Let's come. <laughs> <down. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Close over there. Okay. Ooh. 
Oh, almost. Awesome. Three. Three. Almost. So you have to take it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so nice. That was yeah, that was really nice. I think when we come back, let's just sit down and kind of reminisce. And mm -hmm. I can get to also know a little bit more about you and mm -hmm. how these um, moments in your childhood yeah. helped form your who you are today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Casanova. <laughs> with the word. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Dora Technical Training Institute ETTI prides itself as a student-centered institution committed to nurturing and growing careers. Enrollment for May and September intakes is ongoing. Apply now. Eldora Technical Training Institute. Owing reputation. <laughs> Been a sinner, at a margin, Ilion Bonica Semasina. Always wanted to be a singer, but along the way, I think focus in the Bakisina. Nataka knew an hour, so I told me, Let me know any me now, any me now. Cause the Amo Poli Haina Makosa in a poor bin and a moon at all, and in a cosa. See a Johnny Maumi. The heat in association with Coca Cola. The three sides of Anna. It cost me a lot just to keep the secret from her. I can't take it anymore. We both know that Anna Leticia loves to draw attention to herself. And she did that thanks to all your help, hmm? <laughs> no! No! For heaven's sake, Soledad! Soledad, please wake up! The three sides of Anna. Sour, sour. Sour Shower has never been better with the new look Sawa. Now with a new formulation too that will leave you feeling fresh for longer. While the soap lasts even longer. All right, so now that we have finished with the games, <laughs> now we're not as agile as we used to be, so we need to sit down, mm -hmm. rest a little bit, um, and talk, because yeah. I want to hear a little bit from you how your childhood and the entertainment, you know, the forms of entertainment, whether it was games or just the different interactions, did that inform your career at all, or how you now kind of see the world and interact with the world? Yeah, I guess, yes. I think for me it was, you see, we had all these games yeah and out of all these games i guess you would find like there's a person who was good at like like in every game you'd yeah. find somebody who's really good at that yeah so if it's like making cars out of wires you'd find there's somebody who does it yeah. way better than everybody else yeah but as you wouldn't you know at that point we wouldn't translate like what he would become yeah. you know, understand it's or engineering to, yeah. or whatever and then the guys who would be good at running some other you know like three sticks yeah. the guys would three really sticks like would be able to jump yeah, like and that's in the olympics yeah not quite called exactly three sticks, mm. but yes yeah so that, as we got yeah. older as we got older, maybe in primary school or high school, yeah. 
some of those guys translated like footballers uh, you know like kuna the ones that the, the, the path was pretty clear if you're good at football like yeah. because we have seen other guys succeed yeah. in soccer then like for my hood like there were no artists in my hood uh, like in 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 Ngando there were no, so I was the first yeah. so guys didn't really even know how to do like where do we place you you understand yeah, like there's nothing yeah. <laughs> like, there's no studio yeah. here there's nothing yeah. we have never had an artist like yeah. we had just guys who are big from Islands and then they move because Ngando is just near Ngong Road yeah. Yeah. so it's half hood would have Bougie. almost like yeah. suburb. It's turned yeah. up to Karen. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so oh. I think it informed. Like for me, like when you used to do the Nasser rhymes and guys were really like, everybody else was doing it. But mm. when it comes to me, Moji, can you do it again? Can you can you rap again? Oh. Ama guys would call other guys, Yo, Moji, you need to hear Moji do it. Yeah. So that's how like it informed like, like what I do now. Right. Yeah. Well, mine was a tough one. Uh, because me like grow kibra like neighborhood yetu it was more of uh the uh kulikuwa more of tribalism because kibra kulikuwa na ile vako ya ah ufai kucheza na watoto wa majaka oh ufai kucheza na watoto wa kikuyu so it was hard for me to even interact with other kids mm. so for me it was more of nilikuwa protected sana man nilikuwa nimefungwa mm. but now nilikuja sasa ku kukuwa exploited when I was in high school because nearly end up boarding school. Yeah. So it was more of, you know, funkies, mm. games mnaenda mm. kufanya nini, what can you do? But for me it was more of uh, entertainment. I wanted to be a DJ because that's th- that's the first thing I did after high school. Yeah. So kwa hood pale ilikuwa locked kabisa. Tulikuwa tumefungiwa. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So now that you've even talked about DJing and music and yeah. you know, you know, an artistry, what shows or actors or singers would you kind of look up to growing up w- whether local or international mm-hmm. that you just be like wow like this person whether it's Rambo yeah i don't know Renegade or all these you know were there were there people in international artists whether it's hip hop or b it doesn't matter who kind of stuck with you as man if i could only get to this you see eh, after i was in high school cuz akili yangu ilikuwa based on I want to be a DJ. Yeah. And uh this this one person who used to inspire me so much alikuwa to Jimani. And uh he is actually my boss right now at Homeless ah. Radio. So I, I there's a time I went to one of their functions and nikamwambia ni aje ji mimi manzi nataka kuwa DJ because now Homeboy is your time to likuanga the best DJ schools yeah. jini nini blah blah blah. Uh, I did for like a couple of months then something happened in our family so mm. siku maliza. Yeah. But for me that's the person that I really used to look up to. And uh, he has inspired me so much. Apart from him, Chris Darling, because okay. yes, Sandy Alini let us sing because we need Alini. Fungwa macho kani ingiza kani mbia ivi na ivi na ivi na ivi na ivi. So those are the main two people that. Okay, Jimani and Chris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. First of all, when it comes to music, like I think some time when it comes to some time, I relate the first the first genre of music you interact with. I think is reggae. Mm. Uh, so it's not going like you know reggae, and then now after that, you can you know find yeah. your wings and fly yeah. so reggae like what you call tees you know like yeah. all those other things like that's so find anybody so that's that's the music i think was predominantly just played everywhere yeah. and yeah. now any other hit song or uh, coffee or me there and all yeah. these other songs blah 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 so for me i think earlier on i had guys who were like they like caught my attention mm-hmm. Uh, so the guys like the Kina Raftons and then Akina mm, Isa, Isa, Nameless and, and all these other guys, Mr. Googs. Um, and then now I think in high school, it's when like I interacted. You know, there's, you, you experience so many things and so many people and then you experience this one person that embodies everything that you think. Ah, yeah, and for me that was, that? that was Giuliani. Ah. Yeah, because I was, I was intrigued by how he was hood and still intellectual, you yeah. get? Like he could still like mention things and thoughts and put thoughts together in a in a in a in a song right. in a way that yeah and i didn't even know like i wanted to be maybe knowledgeable or stuff yeah. like that but it just it was just interesting to hear him play with words and all that yeah, yeah. so giuliani was like for the longest time like and since i um experienced giuliani in form 1 now yeah. like i had him on my locker like wow. all that yeah like it was crazy and then of course the whole gospel thing because now being brought up as a christian yeah. like i used to exp- i used to listen to music but the people i really look up to were the, like christian guys because they really like resonated with what is in my heart yeah. so the giuliani is the the ecotitas maybe uh, and all these other guys yeah, yeah. Mm. oh yeah. wow how different do you think it is now who do you think right now kind of challenges people or, or embodies the qualities i mean for you i guess you're even working with them you know the people that you kind of said you look up to 
But I wonder, for, for this generation, mm. who do you think is kind of challenging the status quo or producing really cool uh, art, whether it is in the form of fashion mm. or music? Who would you say right now embodies those qualities of this generation that kind of pushes people to think? Pushes people. It, it's, it's funny now, Es, because I have a... I have an um, eleven-year-old sister yeah. and a twelve-year-old, well, thirteen-year-old brother. Yeah, yeah. And you know their scope. Oh wow. The scope is yeah. wider than, yeah. than 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 yeah. Than, yeah they have access to yeah. artists yeah. that we couldn't. Yeah. Like, like my yeah. like my sister is. Of course, now they started using my YouTube. So yeah. like I used to go to I used to go home. Like whenever I used to come, like stay in my house and stuff like that, or use my phone when yeah. I get home. Like the suggested videos on my on my YouTube. Who, I'm just who is like, that? Tell me, tell me. Yeah. So like my sister who spend hours and hours on five minute craft. Ah. You can understand. Right. And she watched like a YouTube, a kid YouTuber from London called Tiana. You yeah. get? Oh, and she'll be on there like for hours. Oh, you get? Right. So like the scope of influencers and guys like they look up to first of all is really like the internet has brought has like opened it up. Yeah. You get like she watch the voice for kids and yeah. stuff like that. So if you ask her like if you ask her what foods do you like most likely, maybe she'll mention food she has never even had, forget, because uh. she has consumed it so much. So the scope <laughs> is really, the scope is really uh, wide yeah. right now. Yeah, because I don't care because what we have done, like when Guinea at a say, who is it? Who's your hero? Da 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 da. da they'll say yeah. But now when it comes to like things like comedy, still like maybe guys like Akina Jugu and shit. You have like at least it's a bit local at least when it comes to comedy. When it comes to music, of course. Right now, the people in the hood they might not be looking up to Gengeton is that thing yeah. and, and gospel peer <laughs> because I do gospel and, and you can, like, I know who relates to my mm. music. So we have, I think everybody is, ev everybody now has an equal chance to inspire yeah. a kid because yeah. everybody is on is on a level playing ground. Yeah. There's access. See, come on, let's see, that we could only hear Isa. Mr. Bus, Books and Because period. they want yeah. radio. Say yeah. YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Say everything Everyone they watch. Everyone is an influencer right You're right. right. Yes. You're absolutely right. And it's because of, excuse me as I dial turn back <laughs> to the ages, it's because of technology. Yeah. Yeah. You know, before, it's like, this is what we used to. In fact, have you watched some of the Ellen episodes where she kind of brings young interns, like and tells young them, interns tells and tells them how to, them. yeah, how call this number and I'll give you money. Know. And they're just like, and you're like, no, you've got to die yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. stuff. Um, but anyway, so back to technology. It's completely changed. Uh, and, Everything. And, yeah, exactly. And all the people who, were act who acted as gatekeepers, yeah. which a lot of time it was radio mm. and broadcasters, yeah. the TV, they were the ones who determined who we watch, who we look up to, who yeah. we regard as heroes. Yeah. And now you're right. Everyone, everyone, everyone is an influencer. Everyone is modeling yes. because you have a platform. Everyone that, is, yeah. is on radio. Everyone is on TV. Yeah. You can literally you're, you do it. You're on Instagram. As you're long as you just trended. Uno just say Kenya vako ni gani? Fanya tu kitu crazy. U trend. Yeah. U trend u shapata kazi. U shapata kazi. And that's, that's it. it. And you, you find even like now there are smaller individuals in, in circles. You mm. find like right now like there are guys you follow. Yeah. They don't even have so many followers. But yeah. they post really nice memes and that's yeah. your entertainment. You get yeah. like yeah. it's very, it's not even like so it's not, it's not closed to people who just have big like followers yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah, like it could be I, up. that's absolutely yeah. true. So things have changed. You could, like you ask a kid now, yeah. what do you like watching? What do you like doing? Like mm. you would expect, what would you, you like the answer now can you be. Have no yeah, you have no idea. The answer can be. You have no idea. Anything. It can be wrestling to, to I like watching cooking videos. Yeah. I like watching Nini. I like watching recipes yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And somehow I feel like it's too much pressure to the young generation because right now everyone wants to trend. Everyone, mm. uh, everyone wants to be a celebrity. Uh, cause unataka a certain, you know, respect in the industry, or you want a certain uh, kujulikana. I know unataka do pate your attention. Cause yeah. see kitambo, you used to struggle. Uko na mapepa zako hapa. Ndio hizi degree umefanya mass communication umefanya kila kipato pati le job. Yeah. Sai. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I think that could that debate could carry on, and mm. and and I'm not even sure if it's, there's a clear answer as to whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. I think I remember reading a study or hearing about a study that um, asked a bunch of children, what would you rather be, uh, an influencer or, mm. or a YouTuber or mm. something like that, mm. or an astronaut? Mm. And majority of people were saying influencer. <laughs> and, and the truth, and there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. right? I, like my career started off, off of that space. Yeah. But I don't, 
I think it's not because that you know it's not because people want to express their curiosities or, mm. or creativity. I think a lot of it has to do with the hunger for fame, yeah. which is you know, it's a it's a twisted thing that now there's more and more people yeah. striving for that. But um, and then the yeah. problem is like I think also like we need to also like say this that that the, the reason why so many people want to also do some of these things yeah. so they don't know how hard they, they like yeah. actually they don't know how hard like for you creating yeah. creating content yeah. you, you know, like you just see this just looks so cool like she just wakes yeah. up does this blah yeah. blah blah and blah 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 and i think so many people have it's like when DJing, you know, was a fad yeah. and everybody else. Yeah, right now, now we have so many guys, DJ. like in every yeah. family, there's somebody who has done a DJ yeah. course. Yeah. Only that cannot DJ. Yeah. And I think with time, I think what we should do to the younger guys, make sure we, we don't limit their exposure mm. to just what they see online. Like yes. try to take them yeah. like, like, and if, if it's online, because now they're also, there are, there are cons to the online thing. Because yeah. like, like now I know my sis, I know her interest now. Mm. I know she likes fixing things. I know she likes cooking. Yeah. So I know instead of telling her go out and play with blada, yeah. I can take her to a cooking yeah. class. Okay. Yeah. Or I can buy her yeah. or I can buy her nini. I can buy her baking, yeah, baking set. stuff and stuff. Yeah. So it's we can use it as as a measuring tool to it, see it what to see what is like what are the interests like yeah. what does this and kid, how do you support yeah, them yeah yeah I don't know unless it's something like wrestling then you're like how can I help <laughs> yeah. you know? but <laughs> even wrestling do you guys do you guys watch Fury the other day yeah I did Fury and I do Wilder the fight, is I, I, it I, I, yeah. I knew it would be beaten uh, somehow <laughs> bronze bomb the bronze but bomber was yeah. born. Yeah, mm. you you just you, you don't, don't even know you don't know and by the way now that we're speaking we're speaking of wrestling and I know we have to end the show. WWF, e. who used to, w, which one? W oh, no, WWE. E. God, Jesus. It was F, F then E. Yeah. It changed. Was it, it F? Off as yes, F yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, for sure. Oh. No, no, you don't mention it. Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> I remember it was WWF because we used to go watch the and, and Stone Cold, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um and the the Rock, the Rock, and the guy Manchester. who what do you call the person who who was in the graveyard and Nani. works the night Undertaker, Undertaker, Undertaker. and the brother hey. King, hey. yeah, it was that, yeah. it was the gold dust, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, yeah, all right, guys. thank you so much. I must so do much. the Mick Mark. Which was that? Oh. Is it the, the CEO, the chairman? I mean, I the girl of wrestling, the boss, the boss. Yeah. She used to do this, the walk. I don't know. Ah. Vic McMahon. Like, I don't remember. Oh, yes, 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 oh. yes, yes, yes. But I remember Vic one, McMahon. loving it so much and the way I used to try and do it with my brother and uh. until he became stronger than me. <laughs> Cancelled. Uh. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. This was so much fun. Like, mm. stepping into my Kwanzaa when you were cutting the blood out, there's something that just hit me so hard <laughs> about it's like I. And in fact, what I remember is that the Wembers didn't look exactly like that. It, there was one that was like a sh It was blunt on one side and then yeah. I don't, it looked like they, a they knife. Used to, they, you, they always used to I break. Yeah. They always, like, we used to also, yeah. always like break. There was them. that too, yeah. yeah. So they always have like one side Man, of the Wembe. thank you. Yeah. This was really good. And I can't wait to do this over and over. And now that I've even remembered, there's so many layers. Yeah. Um, I mean, so many other games, three sticks. Somebody uh, should start a gig uh, yeah, yeah. with just all these yes. games. <laughs> That's what we should do. Yeah, you can't be right. Event organizers, yeah. yo, yo, yes, yo, yo. This was it. We, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, for, thanks so much, guys. And thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Again, if you have any um, tips or kind of games that you'd like us to play at our next um, th TBT show, make sure you hit us up on social media. That is Living With Us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And why not just shout out your Insta, Insta as well? So a very big shout out to everyone who follows me on Instagram at Miss Katua with no space. Okay. And uh, una kaida, let's meet on Saturday on NTV for that reggae show, Jam Down. Sawa. Yeah, at Moji Short Baba across all platforms. I will see your new music coming soon. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. See you. Bye. Dialing out. Hello? <laughs> uh -huh. Women find independence by training them in fish farming. It's tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches.
Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. If symptoms persist, seek medical.